Welcome back party people. My name is Daryl Wilson and today I'll be showing you guys how to build your own online community website or social media websites with WordPress step by step. Now this video is going to be incredible. So let me show you all the website that we're going to make today in this video. I'll show you how to make a vibrant and beautiful community website with WordPress. With this website, you can create your own community for yoga, your church, gardening, or whatever it is you like to do that others like to do. On your community website, you can display a list of all of your registered members. You can also create groups or allow other users to create groups. You may also sell your products or let other users sell products on your community website. And you can also sell your own courses on your website. Your visitors can post in the activity feed, like, comment, and even upload images just like Facebook. Your users can add each other as friends and also send messages. You can allow or disable a lot of these features and I'll cover more of this in the video. Plus your community website integrates with the Elementor page builder. So you'll have access to hundreds of templates to make your website beautiful and professional. You can create great sales pages and landing pages for your community websites. And the best part is you can offer paid memberships on your website. You can offer free and paid memberships or you can restrict the website to paid members only. And I'll walk you through on how to set all of this up today in this video. Also, there are large authority websites using the same platform that I'll show you how to make today in this video, like Founder Magazine. They have more than 3 million followers and they monetize their community websites by selling online memberships. Next is the Hustle Community. This community website has more than 50,000 members. The website makes money by affiliate commissions, paid advertisers, and they also sell their own courses on their websites. Lastly, the Drone Academy. This community monetizes their website by offering discounts, affiliate deals, and courses for users who want to learn more about flying drones. There are thousands of websites running their own communities and making a lot of money from their websites. So this tutorial is a little large, so I put timestamps in the description of this video. So if you got one section down, feel free to jump to any part of this video at any time. Also, if I'm going too fast or too slow, feel free to use that gear icon thing at the bottom right to speed up or slow down uh, the video. And with that said, let's go ahead and get started and build your community website today with WordPress. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase discounted and fast web hosting. And welcome to namehero.com. Now namehero.com, again, I've been recommending for years. They are one of the fastest and the most reliable web hosts out there. Now through my link exclusively, you guys will receive up to 73% off your web hosting. And that is the largest discount code that Name Hero has to offer. Now I do wanna talk about these, these, uh, these pricing plans in conjunction with the theme that we're gonna be using. Now, normally in my other videos, I recommend the Starter Cloud or the Plus Cloud. However, for this specific thing that we're gonna be using, they require an SSD drive and at least two gigs of RAM or more. So we have to purchase a plan based off of these specs because um, this theme requires a little bit more resources than other typical WordPress themes because you know we're, we're doing a lot more with this website. So I recommend the Turbo Cloud because this actually offers NVMe storage which is a lot faster than typical SSD. And we also have at least three gigs of RAM uh, for our package. So just to make sure that your site's performing well and just to be on the safe side, I recommend going with the Turbo Cloud or even the Business Cloud if you wanna go that route. So once you get to this page, go ahead and select your package. Again, I recommend at least the Turbo Cloud or the Business Cloud for uh, this specific tutorial. So you'll go ahead and click on order now. All right, cool. So this is where you're going to enter in your new website. So for example, my new amazing website.com or my dog is amazing.com or whatever you want to put. I'll just put demo tutorial 123.com and click on search. And look at that. We get a free domain on top of that. So once you select your domain, you'll click on continue. Lastly, we have the review and checkout. And look at that, you just saved $125. You have a year of web hosting and ID protection for under $70. So you have a very good value with namehero.com. Once you're on this page, you will scroll down. Next, we have the billing details. So you've seen the screen before, you'll put in your first name, your last name, your social security number, your bank account. I'm just kidding guys, they don't want that information. <laughs> it's a joke. You'll put in your billing address and any other information you see here. For the support pin, make sure you write this down. So if there's an issue or you want to know something about your accounts, they will want to know about your pin 
just to verify that it's you calling and they wanna make sure it's not just some random person over the internet trying to get your info. You'll create a password, which you probably use the same password for all your other websites, right? I'm just joking. I, I do that sometimes, but I should really stop that. We have the payment method, so you can pay with credit card, PayPal, Coinbase, or credit card, Stripe. Look at that, people are using crypto. In fact, crypto, I think Bitcoin's almost at $20,000 right now. Yeesh, it's crazy, man. This is going up. And then you can go ahead and fill all this information out. Once you fill everything out on this page, you will then click on the checkout button. Now I will purchase an account and I will meet you on the very next page. And congratulations on registering your domain. So this is your current client area. Here you can access your support, you can access billing, you can purchase more domains, or you can upgrade or purchase other web hosting packages if you want to do that. And Name Hero has very good support. So at any time you have a problem with your website, under the support, you can open a ticket or you can contact them anytime if you have issues with the websites. So next let's install WordPress onto your new domain. Under the My Cloud, you'll go ahead and click on My Cloud. I like this new interface Name Hero introduced. They recently remade their whole websites. For those of you who have been with Name Hero for a while, you can tell they did a really good job at making their site look really nice. So I will click on the Plus Cloud. The next thing that we will do is we will access the cPanel. So on the left side under Actions, you will see Login to cPanel. Go ahead and click on Login to cPanel. All right, cool. So next, let's install WordPress. Let's scroll down. Just keep scrolling. Just keep scrolling. We're going to find WordPress installer and we're going to install WordPress onto our domain. So under software, you'll see WordPress manager by Softaculous. Go ahead and click on that. Next, it's going to say install a new copy. So let's click on install. All right, so this is the software setup. So let's just change some quick settings while we install WordPress onto our domain. For the protocol, make sure you have HTTPS. That just makes sure that your website has a valid SSL and that just lets people know that your website is secure. For the indirectory, make sure nothing is there. That just means yourwebsite.com, you know, that's it. We don't want it to be whatever that is, so just leave it like that. For the site name, you can give your website a name and you can also give it a description. So this can be web agency. You guys can see I've, I, I do this quite often and I just put a cool website agency or something like that. You can change all this later, so don't worry about it. For the admin username, uh, make sure you put something that you know because you will need this information to log into your website and change it. So I'll put Paddywhack. And then for my admin password, I'll put uh, Paddy Whack 99 For the admin email, make sure you have access to this specific email because let's say, for example, you forget your password, you will need to have access to this email to retrieve your password. And I'll scroll down. You can also select your language, but I just speak English, so I'll leave this as English, but you can select all of these languages like Spanish, Turkish, Arabic, and, and all those languages, and scroll down. And then we will click on the install button at the bottom of the screen. So now it's installing WordPress onto our domain. All right, WordPress has successfully been installed. On the administrative URL link, you can click on this link right here. And congratulations, you have now successfully installed WordPress and your website is now live on the internet. Now this is the back end of your website where you can make pages and posts. Now if you want to see what your website looks like right now, what you'll do is you'll click on the top left right here and click on visit sites. And this is your website, congratulations. All right, see you guys later. No, I'm just kidding. It's using a uh, default theme. It's uh, It looks pretty bland and boring and ugly and you know, it needs some help, it needs some work, but don't worry, we'll make it look really good. All right, good job guys. So now that you guys have your domain and hosting, now I'll be showing you guys how to turn your website into a community style website where people can like stuff and comment. We're gonna be using a specific WordPress theme for this and it's designed specifically for community websites. So with that said, let's go ahead and keep going with this tutorial. All right, so this is the back end of your WordPress website. Now, if you wanna see what your website looks like right now on the top left, you can click on visit sites and this is your current WordPress website. I know it's a little bland, a little boring, but not to worry, we'll make it look really, really good. So let's go over here back to our dashboard. Now, before we go on and make the website look really nice and add a bunch of features, let's adjust the general settings and just make some small changes to the general settings here. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is over here under users, we'll click on profile. Now, this is where you can change the admin color scheme of the backends because you're gonna be working in the backend quite a bit. 
You can also go down here and fill out the username and also your email. So if you ever want to change your email, you can go ahead and uh, submit it here. This is important because if you forget your password, it's going to send it to this specific email. So uh, yeah, just make sure, uh, yeah, make sure it's something that you have access to. And then also for those of you who don't know your password, you can go ahead and set a new password here. And then once you're done adjusting it or adding your new password, you can click on update profile. So I'll go ahead and click on update profile. All right, now there are one other options that I want to quickly talk about over here under settings. You can click on general. Now I realize people watching my videos uh, might speak specific languages. So if you want to see uh, the back end in any of these languages, you can go ahead and adjust it. So for example, if you want to change it in Spanish, you can go down here and click on save changes. And then all of the, uh, the sections here will be displayed in a different language. So I'll go ahead and change mine back to English here and then click on save changes. Now there is another option that I want to quickly talk about and that is permalinks. So click on a permalinks. Now your permalink settings, you wanna change this to post name. Now the reason why you wanna do this is because you want your website to look clean and have your website.com slash about us, right? Or dash contact, not all this, you know, numbers and stuff. It doesn't look clean and it's not good for SEO. So once you select post name, you'll click on save changes. All right, and I think that's pretty much it. So right here, let's click on dashboard. So at this point, we've adjusted the general settings and now let's go ahead and purchase and install the BuddyBoss platform. All right, so there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a page to purchase the BuddyBoss WordPress theme. And this is BuddyBoss.com. Now BuddyBoss is actually one of the best social platforms to build online communities. I know this because I've tested out various uh, themes and plugins and hands down, Buddy Boss just gives you the most control and it's the most easiest to get set up with. So uh, when you get to this page, go ahead and click on buy now. All right, so this is the Buddy Boss pricing page. And let me quickly go ahead and talk about these pricing plans. Now, at the time of making this video, they are currently having a 10% off sale. If you guys miss this sale, you guys can use my code Daryl10 and that will give you 10% off any of their pricing plans. Also remember this company gives you a 21 day money back guarantee. So for any reason you follow this video and it just doesn't work out for you, there's no problem. You can always get your money back guaranteed with a 21 day uh, money back guarantee. So they have three different pricing plans. This one is good for one website. This one is good for five websites and this third plan is good for 10 websites. Now keep in mind when you purchase these plans, you get access to their support and also updates. So when they add new features, you guys get all the features and their support is actually very useful. In fact, I have used their supports and I could vouch that it's actually pretty helpful. They responded in the same day, which is really, really cool. So I would recommend going with the five websites because what happens is people probably build one community website, you know, they build up some traffic and they're saying, hey, you know, I also know how to build this other website or I also want to talk about this. So you can build different communities for different topics. So go ahead and select a plan that works for you and your business. For now, I'll just select the five sites and then I'll click on buy now. All right, so on this page, you'll go ahead and fill out your billing details. You'll put in your first name, your last name. I'm sure you guys have seen pages like this before on other various websites. You'll go ahead and make a, a username and also an account password. And this is our uh, product. Again, remember, if you guys do need the code, you guys can enter Daryl10, and this will give you 10% off any of their uh, pricing plans for uh, Buddy Boss. So once you guys have filled all this information out, you guys can pay with credit card, and you guys can also pay with PayPal if you choose. Now, once you guys have purchased the product, I will meet you guys in the account section where I'll show you how to download your product. All right, congratulations. Welcome to the Buddy Boss family. Now, this is the back end right here. So we have our downloads. You can check your orders. They also have a done for you service. So for those of you who watch this video and you just have a lot of problems, you guys can always do the, the done for you service. However, personally, I don't recommend it because if there's a problem with something, you don't wanna have to keep going back to them and saying, hey guys, I have a problem with this. Can you fix it? You know, you kinda of wanna learn how to use the, uh, the software before you actually just reach out to get help. So this is the product that we need. So we're gonna download the Buddy Boss theme. 
the Buddy Boss Platform, and we're also going to download the Buddy Boss Platform Pro. So we're gonna download these three uh, items. So go ahead and click on download, and you're gonna wanna download the current version right here. So go ahead and click on download. And then I'll save this. And once you're done with this one, we'll go ahead and download this one right here. All right, download. All right, there we go. And one more, I know we're almost there. Here we go, there we go, download, all right. And then we will save this to our computer. So now that we've downloaded the theme and the plugin, now let's go back to our WordPress website and upload it and you guys will see what happens. All right, so first let's go ahead and install the WordPress theme. So over here under appearance, we'll click on themes. Now, again, for those of you who don't know what themes are, themes are essentially kind of like the style of the actual website. Some of them have some features, you know, they, they have very similar features now because, you know, a lot of them have like header and footer builders and a lot of the themes are becoming more and more similar, which makes them pretty much all the same now. So uh, that's that. So uh, right here under upload theme, you'll click on browse. All right, and this is the Buddy Boss theme. So what I'll do is I'll click on this and I will open it and then I'll click on install now. Now, before we upload Buddy Boss to our server, we need to make one small change to our server and our cPanel because Buddy Boss is actually a large theme. So we need to increase the amount that we can upload to our WordPress website. It's really easy. I'll show you guys how to do it. So uh, right here, you'll click on your cloud or your servers and then you'll get a list of servers and you should probably only have one, right? So what I'll do is I will click on the server. So you'll just click on your server, right? And then you'll click on login to cPanel. All right, so once you're here, you'll select PHP, just type in PHP and software, you'll see select PHP version. So go ahead and click on select PHP version. It's just like a shortcut just to make it, you know, I have to keep scrolling down and, you know, find out where uh, that icon is. So now you'll go ahead and configure all of this by yourself. No, I'm just kidding. So all you have to do is just click on options and then we're gonna scroll down here and we're just going to allow um, our server to upload more. So under upload max file size, you'll go ahead and change this to something like around 64 or 128. Also for the post max file size as well, um, I have mine on 512 because by default, this is actually on eight megabytes and this WordPress theme is more than eight megabytes. So it will not let us upload the theme. So you have to just configure that in your server to say, hey, um, can we upload more to our server? And once you set that, uh, it will allow you to upload a Buddy Boss with no problem. So let's go ahead and go back to our WordPress website. All right, so once you're here, you'll click on appearance and themes. And then right here, I'll click on add new. And here you have popular themes. So they do have a, quite a bit of themes. Now, none of these themes are actually gonna work for a social community website. A lot of the themes today are actually becoming more and more similar. But uh, right here, you'll click on Upload Theme, and then you'll go ahead and select the file. So Browse, and you'll select the Buddy Boss theme. It should be a zip folder, right? And then click on Open. And then once you've done that, you'll click on Install Now. All right, so once your theme has uploaded, you'll click on Activate. And now we have this video from the owner and you guys can watch this if you want. He's just saying, you know, thank you for purchasing Buddy Boss. He's like, thank you for your money, guys. That's that's really what we're all trying to say here. But no, he actually gives some good and valuable information and uh, they do provide tons of really good tutorials for you if you ever get lost or you ever get stuck with something. So now that we install the Buddy Boss theme, now let's go ahead and install the plugins for Buddy Boss. But real quick, if you wanna see your sites, we'll click on visit sites. And now you'll see how it's slowly starting to change. So pretty cool. But uh, let's go back over here to dashboard. And under plugins, we'll, we'll click add new. So under upload plugin, we'll click on browse. Now you're gonna have to upload both plugins here. So it doesn't matter which one you install first. Um, the pro must be installed with the base one. So that's just how it goes. So uh, what I'll do here is I will open this and click on install now. All right, so once you upload it, you'll click on Activate Plugin. All right, so you might just get this quick notification. I'll close that. And now I'll go ahead and install the second plugin. So over here under Plugins, I'll click on Add New. Click on Upload Plugin, Browse. 
And now we're going to install or upload that second plugin. So over here, I'll click on open and install now. Essentially, it's just the pro version. So it just gives you a lot more features than their current base version of Buddy Boss. So now let's go ahead and get rid of this really annoying notice. So it says your Buddy Boss products are almost ready. Now here, let's go ahead and activate our product licenses. So go ahead and click on activate your product license. You guys can also get here by going to Buddy Boss and then clicking on license keys. Now there's two ways to do this. You guys can actually enter in your license key and then put in the email that you use to register with Buddy Boss, or you can click on connect to Buddy Boss and it'll sync up with your current WordPress website. Now, if you need help on finding your key, you'll go over here and click on themes and plugins, and then you'll see the code. And then you can just go ahead and copy and paste it right here under license key. All right, but I'll go ahead and just connect to Buddy Boss. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go the easy way. I'm gonna take the ticket here. So I'll just click on connect to Buddy Boss. All right, congrats. So it says right here, our license keys for the following products have been activated. So we have the theme and the platform pro. So go ahead and click on okay. All right, and it automatically filled up my license key and my email. Again, you guys can get all this information right here under themes and plugins. So this is where you can get your, your code. So you can go ahead and copy and paste it. You guys can also renew your plan. You can upgrade and you can also deactivate it on specific websites if you want to do that. Also, let's say you guys have a problem with something. Over here under support tickets on the left side, you guys can open up a support ticket at any time if you want to do that. Uh, on the top right, you'll see plus new tickets, and then you can open up a ticket and they'll probably want your login credentials and they'll go ahead and take a look at everything. So sometimes when you're building your website, you might get random problems. It happens to everyone. You know, you might get a random plugin conflict or something like that. So uh, these guys will always help you with any problems that you might have on your community websites and they're pretty fast. So first let's go ahead and go over here to pages and let's click on all pages. Now when you install Buddy Boss by default, it will create the pages that it needs for your website. So you'll see we have the news feed, which is like your activity feed. You have the members, you also have the terms of service and a privacy policy. I currently have the shop and the checkout and cart. That's because I installed the WooCommerce plugin. And that's where later I will show you all how to turn your website into a shop where you can add your products and people can purchase products on your website. But first, let's go ahead and just give you guys a crash course on the general settings. So over here under Buddy Boss, let's just click on settings. And I'll go ahead and just quickly touch base on a lot of these options. They're pretty self-explanatory. And after that, we'll go ahead and put our community feed on the front of our homepage. All right, so what I've done here is I've pulled up my community website and I'll go ahead and explain to you how these options work. So the first part is the general settings. Now, this is basically allowing users to delete their profiles. Also, you can take off this annoying toolbar. Uh, I would probably take that off for people who are logged in like the, uh, you know, just the normal members because this can get really annoying. So I would probably hide that and also hide that for people who are logged out. So only I will see this bar at the top right here because, you know, I want to make it look like a real community website. Next, we have enable registration. So this will allow people to register on our website. So you want to make sure that is checked. And then also here we have restrict site access. So later on in the video, we'll, we'll talk about the, you know, the creation of the, um, the, the registration page. You can make your entire website private and it'll force them to make an account. And later on, we can actually offer memberships. So people will have to purchase something in order to get access to our community website. But uh, for now, you can go ahead and restrict the access to the users. So what I'll do here is uh, first I'll click on this and go to save settings. And then I'll go ahead and open this in an incognito window. So right here, open link in a private window. So when the users go to our website who are not logged in, the um, website will prompt them to create an account. So here they can click on create an account and then they'll go through the process of making an account. So uh, they'll have to go through that option in order to go to uh, access your website. So this next part is really interesting. So you can make specific parts of your website public, yet keeping your whole website private at the same time. For example, if I enter in the main members section, which is the URL, which is this section right here, we can then go ahead and let people access this content only. However, the website will be private. Let me give you an example. I'll click on save settings. Next, I will open this in a new browser. 
So here is our current website, and right now our website is private. Now, if I go over here and I type in dash main members, it'll actually allow anyone to access this content. So users can now see, oh, cool, I can see all the main members. However, if they try to navigate to any other part of the website, like the groups page or the news, it's going to restrict them and it's going to force them to create an account and log in to the website. So I just felt that was a very interesting option if you want to apply it to your community websites. Now you can take this off and that means any user can see what's going on on your website. I would probably leave it restricted, but for this part of the video, I'll just leave it on or off just because I want to show you how all this works. So now your users will actually uh, be able to just go directly to the website here and they can kind of see what's going on. So uh, that's the difference of having it checked and unchecked. All right. So go ahead and I'll click on save. And next we have the profile settings. So your users can customize their photos. They can upload specific photos. They can upload cover images. If you don't want users to be able to do that, you can go ahead and enable or disable. So for example, I'll go ahead and click on my profile right here. And in the background, I have this cover photo. So if you want users not to be able to upload that, you can you know, check that. You can also allow users to upload photos to their profile avatars. So next we have profile types and profile types essentially categorizes people on your website. So maybe you wanna create a profile type for teachers, for students, for admins. You can go ahead and enable profile types on your community website. Uh, it is somewhat of a long process, so you guys can actually view the tutorial here if you decide if you wanna add that to your community website. Uh, here we have profile search. So this will basically allow people to search for profiles on your membership websites. And at the bottom section here under profile directories. Now on your members page, you guys can actually change it between the list view and also the grid view if you want to do that. So that's what basically that option is referring to. So next let's click on activity really quick. All right, so here we have our activity settings and here you can configure the options for your activity feed. So for example, you know, you guys can uh, allow members to like each other's posts and so on and so forth. Uh, next, we have the post in activity feed. So when a user does something on your website, you can also put that in the activity feed as well. Like for example, if a user creates a group or if a user joins a group and you can go ahead and display all this in the activity feed. Personally, I think a lot, all this might be too much. Like, you know, no one really cares about updating their profile details or, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're changing their photo. It's like, we don't need uh, a notification when that happens in the activity feed. So next we have the activity access and you can assign specific members only to have access in the activity feed of your website. But um, for now, I'll just go ahead and just leave it as blank, which is default of everybody. But you can assign specific people and roles of people who you only want to see the activity posts. So here I'll click on save settings. So now that we have a good understanding of the activity settings, now let's go ahead and create our activity feed and add in widgets to our websites to make it look like a real life community website. But before we do that, we need to activate these features. So over here under components, these are basically our features. So we can turn on social groups, we can turn on uh, forum discussions, we can turn on media uploading, which allows people to upload uh, photos. We also have private messaging. So for now, what I'll do is I will turn all of these on. So I'll click on this check and I will activate all these features and click on apply. All right, cool. So now you guys can see that I activated all of these components. So now let's go ahead and apply them to our website. So over here, let's click on visit sites. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to assign our homepage as our community page right here, as our news feed. So first, let's go back over here and click on customize. All right, so under our homepage settings, we'll click on this and we'll assign our homepage as the news feed. And then I'll click on publish. Now you need to actually close the theme customizer in order to see some of the changes that are made. So I'll click on the X and close it. And now we can see we have our news feed right here. So, hey, okay, welcome to the websites. And then I can click on post update. And there we go. So now we have someone that has created a post in our uh, activity feed. Next, let's go ahead and add in these widgets right here. So the complete your profile, latest updates. 
Here I have the on sale, which is uh, letting people uh, create products on our uh, community website. And I'll walk you through on how to do that a little bit later. But uh, over here, let's go back and click on customize. All right, so on the left side, you're gonna see widgets. Now, these widgets you can apply on the left and the right side. Now, since we are on the activity feed, these right here will apply to this specific page. So you can have different sidebars for various pages. So you can have a different sidebar on the left and the right side for your members, for your groups and everything else. We'll cover this in the next section, but let's just keep this basic for now. So on the directory left, which is this left side, we can add in a widgets. Now these icons right here, these BB widgets, these are for Buddy Boss, and you can see there's quite a bit. Now you can also use widgets that are offered by default that WordPress gives us. You can also add in widgets that plugins will give you. So for example, if you install the WooCommerce plugin, you can display the products on your uh, widget section as well. So uh, the more plugins that you install that give you widgets, you can also use those on your community website. But let's just keep this very basic for now. So right here we have this complete your profile section. And I believe right here it is, let's see, we have the, where is it here? Where is it? Is it the, my connections? There it is, profile completion. And on the left side, you'll see that we have this little box now. So we can select the details, the profile, the cover photo. And let's say for example, someone actually does everything, right? Let's say they finish all of this. We can make this disappear when it hits 100%. So you want your users to kind of complete the information uh, on their profile, because it'll make your community website look a lot more cleaner. So here we have the images of the person, they have their names, and it just looks more proactive. So we do want the users to fill out and complete their profile. But uh, I'll just select these for now, and I will not select that, so I'll just leave it like that. So next, let's click on Add a Widgets, and now we'll go ahead and find My Connections. So these are the people that um, I want to follow. Now, at the current moment, we have not followed anybody. However, if you do decide to follow someone from your profile, they will then be displayed right here of people who we are following. All right, so let's go ahead and just collapse that for now. And now let's add in the Groups section. We'll create groups in the very next section, but I just want to get it ready. So when we do create groups, you guys will see it appear on the sidebar area. So here I'll type in groups and we have social groups. And there we go. So right now there's no groups to display and that's okay. We'll, you know, we'll add a, we'll add a group in the next section, but you guys can go through this right here and just check all these out. Now remember more of these options will be displayed from more plugins that you install. So for example, if we install LearnDash, you can then display a list of your courses uh, wherever you want. So you guys can kind of go through this and add what you want. Now let's just say you added what you want, right? And I'll go back over here and now we have this right section. So we have the latest updates, which is engaging. You know, this actually right here tells people what people are doing on your website. So uh, on the right side, we can add a widget and this will be the latest activities, right? Latest, latest activities. And, you know, we have activity type. You can kind of, you know, put what you want here about like what groups are doing or group updates or new members or whatever you want to add. You can add it right here and you can display how many. And then you can also change this to, you know, what's going on or what's cracking or, you know, whatever, whatever style you want to add to your community websites. And next we have the on sale. And um, I don't have WooCommerce installed yet, so I'm going to skip that. And now we also have the follow us section. So uh, here we have follow us, all right? And then you can go ahead and paste the links of your social profiles right there. And then here I'll put, uh, you know, uh, follow us, follow us on social media. Something like that, follow us on social media. You can, you know, you can customize this if you want, or you can add whatever you, you know, you wanna add, you can, you know, adjust it all here. But I'll go ahead and collapse this, and let's just add in one more, you know, we can add in anything else we want. Uh, we can add in a members. So this will show the list of the current members, and I believe there's also another one that says who's online at the current moment. So we also have the, let's see, we have recently active members, and who's online, you know? So, you know, if you want someone to, you know, message someone, you can show who's online. However, I might not add this to my group because sometimes people might not be logged in and users might think that this is a dead website. 
So just be mindful about that if you want to go ahead and add that to uh, your community website. So let's click on publish and let's close this really quick. All right, so here we have the complete your profile, right? We have the group section. Now also we have this other widget, but it's disappeared right now because we don't have anyone else in this group. And then on the right side, we have latest updates, follow us on social media, the current members, which I'm the only member obviously, so. And then also we have who's online. So what I'll do right now is I will add a new user to this community to show you uh, what it'll look like when people join your community website. All right, so I have now had someone join my community. So now you see we have members and we have Rachel here and it also shows that she's online. Now, one thing I quickly wanna do is I need to actually change the widget on the left side to people I am following and then I'll show you where you can um, access that on the profiles. So over here under widgets, directory left, I wanna add the widgets as people I'm following. So we have members, following me or members I'm following. And then here we can go ahead and display them right there. I'll get rid of my connections. I'll get rid of this one here and just have people I am following like that. All right, and now let's close this. All right, cool. So now the website looks a little bit more proactive. You know, we have people that I'm following, we have new members, they're online. And you can also see that this user is now online. Now let's say for example, we want to go ahead and change our profile settings and we also want to follow people or even message them. I'll show you how to do that right now. So first off, let's go to our profile and here we have edits. So we can actually add in a profile cover or we can have a, um, you know, they can upload a, a photo of themselves and even add a cover photo here in the back and that'll be in the background of the uh, profile. But right here we have profile photo. Now the users can actually click on take photo and it'll actually use the webcam and they can take a photo of themselves right there from their actual computer, which is really cool. But I'll go ahead and upload a quick photo. All right, so I uploaded the image of me and then we can go ahead and crop it. So we can just, you know, they can crop it to their liking. All right, cool. Now over here under edits, they can always edit their profile. They can change their, their first name, their last name, and also have a nickname as well uh, if, you know, if they want to do that. But um, let's go back to our blog right there. It looks like it can't be empty. So, all right, so now that we have the profile of ourself, we can actually click on profile. So I'll go ahead and click on Rachel here. And here you can see that we can follow and we can also like connect with them as well. And we can also send them messages. So let's say for example, uh, I wanna follow this user. You can see I am following. If I want to unfollow, I can just go ahead and click the unfollow and then that would be the end of it. But uh, for now, I'll go ahead and follow this person. So I'll click on follow, so I'm following. And I can also message this user. So I can send them a message saying like, uh, welcome, and I can send this message. So now let's go ahead and take a look at it from Rachel's perspective. All right, so Rachel has logged into the website. Now you can see the top bar is gone and she can see what's on the feed. And up here we have notifications and she also has messages. So now we can see that we have this message and you know, we can write back to each other saying like, uh, thank you. And she can send this reply. And she can also go to my profile if she chooses and she can, um, you know, she can like my, or follow me or she can do whatever she wants. So I think you have to go to your actual uh, back to the website and actually click on the user from that end. And then we can follow, we can message and so on and so forth. So your users can engage with each other if you want to go that route. You can also disable messages. So if you do not want them messaging each other, you can also disable that in the general settings. All right, now before we go on any further, let's go ahead and change this logo. So I think you guys all probably wanna change this default logo. So we can do that in the back end. So now let's go to our WordPress dashboard. So over here, you can go to your dashboard. And what you'll do is go down to Buddy Boss and you'll click on the theme options. And from here, you guys can upload your own logo if you want to do that. So right here, we have the desktop logo and we also have the logo size. So you can adjust the size of the logo. And then also we have desktop logo for dark mode. So if you want to toggle dark mode on, you can have a specific logo on for dark mode. And then also we have the mobile logo as well. So this will be displayed uh, for mobile devices if you want to uh, you know, have a, a different logo for a, you know, uh, mobile devices. 
So once you upload your logo, you guys can actually just click on save changes and then you guys can save your logo. Now, if you don't want a logo, you guys can just turn it off and the default option that you have for your website name, that will be displayed at the top right here. But if you do wanna have a logo, you can go ahead and turn it on and then save changes and then that would be the end of it. So that's how you can upload your logo to the website. They also do have a lot of these other options and you guys can change the header. You guys can also check out some of these other options. Now these are just preference here. So a lot of these deal with topo uh, topography, uh, styling, and here you can change the color. You guys can also access a lot of these on the front end of the theme customizer. And I'd recommend doing that because um, if you adjust the colors here, you're not really gonna know what you're, what you're changing. But if you visually see what you're changing in the front, it's a lot easier. And then, um, yeah, so you, here you can change the colors, right? You have different footers. So you can enable a specific footer style on your website and you can change the copyright text here. And you guys can uh, apply a footer menu. So just like we made the menu, you can create multiple menus for your specific footer, or you guys can just go ahead and add widgets. And then here you can also add in your social links to your footer as well. It looks like Google Plus, they gotta get rid of that. I think the, a lot of themes still have that and uh, Google Plus has been gone for quite some time. Uh, they also do have some blog options. They have the login and register button right here. And this is actually really helpful. So uh, for example, let's say someone wants to log into your website. You usually want to display your logo, right? So let me give you an example of what this looks like uh, on the login and the register screen. So here we can see that we are trying to log in. So we are trying to sign in or even create an account. So if we click on create account, we have this logo here. So that's what this is referring to. So you can have a custom logo specifically on your login and register page. And you probably wanna do that because you know this kind of represents your website and your business. So make sure you add in a custom logo for that specific page. Oh, I'll close that because it logged me out because I actually signed out of this one here. You can also adjust the logo width and uh, toggle a custom background color if you want to go ahead and have a different, uh, you know, have a different background image or something else on the background, or you can just leave it as this default gray. So that's where you can customize that option. So next we have the 404 page, and this is what users will see when they enter in a wrong URL. So for example, if they go to our websites and they enter in something really bizarre, like, uh, you know, something like this, and they press enter, it'll bring them to a, like you got lost page. And here's where you can customize this specific area right here on the 404 page. All right, also we have maintenance mode and maintenance mode will be applied. So if you do want to put your website in maintenance mode, you guys can go ahead and select that. And then you guys can go through these options, like change the image, enable a countdown, uh, enable social networks and so on and so forth for the maintenance mode. Cover images. So if you want to uh, have users have specific image widths for their cover images, you can adjust these settings here. Also, you can do the same thing for the groups. So essentially what you're doing here is you're creating the exact dimensions of the groups uh, images for groups and also cover photos. So with Buddy Boss, again, it gets really technical and I do like that, that they give you these options to kind of really get in the nitty gritty here and customize everything to your liking. Next, we have forums. So if you do have forms enabled, you guys can go ahead and customize a custom banner image a background overlay color and a background overlay opacity. We'll talk more about forms a little bit later when we actually use them. And also Learn Dash, which we have not even uh, activated yet. I'm not gonna go through these options because we haven't installed uh, Learn Dash yet. And then there's other options you guys can check out like custom code and so on and so forth. So uh, we'll come back to this a little bit later, but I just wanted to kind of touch base and just give you guys a, a quick example of some of these options. So right here, I'll click on Save Changes. So going back to our original website, I'll go ahead and upload my logo here. So I put in a desktop logo and I'll click on save changes. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at our website and see what that's done. All right, cool. So now on the top left, you can see that we have our logo right here. So you can also access those theme options in the customizer settings. So I did mention that. So I'll go ahead and click on customize just to show you again where you can access the styling options. So here we have styling, right? And you can adjust the specific colors of the primary colors, the secondary colors, and all of these other different colors. Like for example, the, the primary color right now is blue and we can change that to something like green or something like that. 
And now you'll see that we have these primary colors as green. So you can kind of go through these and kind of mess around with each primary color or secondary color and just kind of get a feel for your website. But I'll change this back to blue. Now, at any time, if you don't know where these colors are being applied to, you guys can just read this. So use for various theme elements, hover links, colors, and icons. So let's go ahead and change this to something like purple here. So now when I go ahead and I hover over these links, you'll see how they turn purple. So that's what you can do if you want to change the hover links and icons. And then, you know, we have heading links right here. And a great way to just kind of find out what these do guys is just by messing around with the colors because they have a lot of color options and it's hard for me to kind of go through each and every single color and tell you exactly where they're being applied. Uh, just mess around with it, um, you know, see if you can get comfortable with it. It will take time to adjust these colors. Like for example, the header active link colors. So I'm assuming that is the menu when we apply it to our uh, menu. And we'll be doing that in the very next section right after we add groups. So yeah, I just wanted to introduce you to an area where you can change the colors throughout your uh, community websites. So let's click on publish here. So let's go to our back end here. I'll go to our dashboard and we're gonna create our first group. Now your members also have the option to, to create groups if you choose to have that on your website and you can always adjust that in the settings section. So if you do want users to create groups, you can go to your settings and you can go to the group options and you can allow users to create their own groups. If you do not want users to, to create their own groups, you can go ahead and disallow that for people to create their own groups. So like for example, uh, administrators can always create groups regardless of this setting. So uh, we'll go ahead and take that out if you do not want users to create groups. So I just wanna be very clear on that because uh, I don't want users to create groups on your website. Then you're like, hey man, I don't want them to do that. So here I'll click on uh, save settings. So on the left side, you'll see groups and we'll simply create a new group. So I'll click on new group and this will be like Daryl's community website, community group or you know, about, I don't know, Java. And then here you can give some description about the group. So we talk about WordPress. And then we'll go ahead and publish this group. All right, so once you guys create groups, you guys will then see we have more options. So you can invite other people to the group. You can say, uh, you can assign specific roles or people who can only post in the group. So let's say, for example, you do not want to give users uh, the ability to post, you can go ahead and enable or disable that option. You can also change uh, people who can upload photos in the group, and then also who can manage albums in this group and so on and so forth. Now, let's say for example, you wanna add a specific member, right? So we do have that, gr uh, that girl, Rachel, right? So we can add a Rachel to the group. Is it Rachel? Is that her name, Rachel? Did I, was that her name? Yeah, there it is, Rachel. Ah, there we go. So we have Rachel, right? Now we can add Rachel to the group manually if we want to do that. So let's do that. I'll go ahead and click on Save Changes. All right, and now let's visit the group. All right, cool. So we have our group, it's public. Now we can add a background image to this and we can also change the group photo. So you might wanna do something that represents the group, right? So um, here we can click on Change Group Photo. And then here we have select your file. So I'll go ahead and just select the, I don't know, I'll just put something here. And then here I will crop it, right? Crop photo. And there we go. So this is now our community group. Now you can do the same thing here for the cover photo as well. All right. So here we click on feed. And this is where you can kind of engage in the actual group right here. So this is the feed. It's like, welcome to the group. So this feed only applies within these groups. So this is not posting in the actual uh, community feed on the website. And right here under members, we can see who is actively in the group. So we have the admin and we also have Rachel. So pretty cool, right? So yeah, that's how you guys can create groups for your community websites. Now, the last thing we need to do is we need to assign this group to our actual website. So if we actually just go to the website, we're not gonna be able to see the group on our menu right here. However, we do have, have groups right here because remember earlier how we added in the widgets for groups. So now all of the groups will be displayed right here, which is pretty cool. So now let's go ahead and add in a menu to our website. We don't have one yet, so let's go ahead and create a navigation bar so users can kind of access different parts of the website without having to click on these widgets right here. So first, let's go to our dashboard. 
And right here under appearance, we'll go to menus. And this will be the main menu of the website. So I'll just put main menu for website, right? And I'll click on create a menu. You can also have menus for people who are logged in, who are logged out, and also on the profile dropdown and also the title bar. So you guys can have specific menus for specific logged in and logged out users if you want to go that route. But uh, right here, I'll click on view all and we have the news feed, right? So I'll add that to the menu. We have groups and we also have members. And I believe Buddy Boss does have some other ones like they have profile or the accounts or whatever else that you wanna add here. So you can add all these to the menu, like messages and everything else. And uh, yeah, you guys can go through these and just you know add whatever you want. Now, I highly recommend changing the newsfeed to something like home, you know, cause uh, newsfeed just sounds so, I don't know, just doesn't sound welcoming, you know? So I'll just put this as the front page and I'll put that as home, right? And then click on save menu. So now let's assign the menu to a specific page. So I want this to be for logged in and logged out users. And that's it. And then I'll click on save menu. All right, so now let's go ahead and visit the site. And now on the left side, we're going to see that we have this home, the groups, and we also have members. So we have this really cool navigation on the right side, on the left side, where users can access the groups and now it takes them to the group page. And then also we can click on members and this will take them to the members section right here. Now I, like, I do like this vertical menu right here. However, you can also add a menu on the top right here if you wanna add that to your community websites. I'll just show you how to do it really quick. You don't have to, but let's go back to our menus. And here we can put it as the title bar as well. And then click save menu and go back to visit sites. And now we have it at the top right here. So it just really, it's all about preference, you know, how you want to approach it. I kind of like the sidebar better. I just think it kind of puts in more space and more activity, or you can have your menu at the top if you choose to do that. All right, so I hope I didn't lose you guys so far. You guys are good? All right, so now let's talk about how we can adjust the sidebars for the specific pages of the groups and the members. So what I'll do here is click on groups. And now we'll click on customize. You remember earlier how we talked about the sidebars for specific uh, pages? So this is what we're gonna do here. On the left side under widgets, we can now go ahead and have sidebars if you wanna have that on your groups directory. So for example, group directory, we can add a widget and we can add in something, I don't know, uh, uh, let's see here, uh, active members, <laughs> right? I, I don't know, what, whatever you wanna add. So now we have the active members and uh, over here we can add another widgets and put, uh, you know, I don't know, whatever you wanna do, members or something like that. Maybe you wanna remind them of people who they can add to the group or something like that. But uh, that's how you guys can add specific widgets on specific pages. And I do like that. So this doesn't apply for the entire website. It only applies to this groups page. So that's it. So I'll click on publish. Now we can also do it one last time for the members page as well. All right, so on our members page, we have widgets and now we have the, the members directory. So this is the directory. And if someone clicks on a single profile, you can then customize the single profile. But uh, here I'll just click on directory and we can add a widgets. And you know, if you wanna add in like groups or something like that, so you can add in groups or here we just type it in there, groups. It's easier to find like that. There we go, there we go, much easier. And then the groups will display there. So that's if someone clicks on the member directory. And uh, again, you can always add these as well on the single uh, profile. So if they click on the actual uh, profile, you can then also add specific widgets to that specific page as well. All right, so let's click on publish. Now there is also one thing I do wanna to touch base and cover. Uh, let's say, for example, you guys delete one of your pages, you know, for God knows whatever reason. I don't know, people using WordPress do really weird stuff all the time. So let's just say you delete this page, right? Well, how do you get the members page back or how do you get any of these pages back? So let's go ahead and just, uh, I'll just do this and you guys can follow me. Here I'll just do plus new and page. And I will make a news page and this will be main members, right? Main members. 
and I will publish and publish. The next thing I'll do is go to my options. Now remember, this is only if you want to um, reassign pages or if you have accidentally deleted your pages. Here under the Buddy Boss settings, we'll go there. And here we have pages. So right now it's on the members page, but uh, we can go ahead and change this to something like main members, right? And then go to save settings. All right, now I'll quickly go ahead and add this to my menu as well because I do not have this on my menu. So again, you guys don't have to follow me here. I'm just, you know, I'm just doing this just to show you how th this works out. So I'll add the main members and I will save this menu. All right, so back on my website, on the left side, we now have members. And if I click on members, you'll see everything's gone. However, if I click on main members, which is the new page we assigned it to, now the page will be assigned to this new page. So at any time, if you guys delete any of your pages or they're trashed for whatever reason, you can always remake them and assign them as your specific page, like members, groups, or activity feed, and so on and so forth. So I think at this point, guys, you guys have a good understanding of how to sort of, you know, develop your community website. I've showed you guys how to apply widgets. I've showed you guys how to add pages to the sidebar. I've also showed you guys how to create groups and also how to add a members directory to your website. So at this point, you guys can kind of tinker around with stuff, get comfortable with it, go through some of the options like the colors and just kind of mess around with stuff. Spend at least like 30 minutes to an hour because a lot of people will comment and saying, how do you do this? How do you do this? And a lot of the stuff you guys can learn just by simply tinkering around with stuff and you guys will kind of get the hang of it. So I think at this point, you guys kind of know how to build your community websites. So let's go ahead and move on to the next section where we're gonna talk about user registration and also some settings that you might want to consider adding to your community website. All right, so in this section, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about registration and also the emails users will get uh, when they register on your website and how they can also turn them off. So first, let's go ahead and go to our dashboard and let's just go to the basics here. So let's just walk through the process of users actually signing up on your website and how the whole process works, which a lot of videos kind of leave out, but this should be the most important part because uh, sometimes you know people forget on how to actually make people sign up for websites. So first thing you wanna do is enable registration. This option will allow non-users to make new accounts on your website. And here we have the registration form, and this is the default registration form. You can also use a custom URL. However, I'm not gonna cover that in this video because we can talk about technical factors all day long, but I just wanna give you guys a general idea of how to uh, use the registration form. So on the registration pages, I'll open this in a private window. All right, so this is what your user is going to see. Now they have the icon. Remember earlier how you can add the icon in the theme customizer setting, so don't forget about that. Now, when the user goes to your page, they'll have the option to sign in or create an account. Now, if they are automatically signed in already, it'll take them to their community feed and that'll be the end of the process. However, users can also click on create an account and now they can go ahead and fill out the information and sign up on your website. Now, there are some other options that you can add to further extend your registration page. So on your registration page, you can also add the email confirmation and also add a password confirmation on the registration form if you want to uh, add that to your website. But let's just imagine someone's brand new to your website and they're going to register for the very first time. All right, so I'm gonna register as a new user. So now that I've entered in my details, I'll click on create accounts. All right, so now your users can go to their email to confirm their email address and they will be allowed to log in to your community website. All right, so at the top right here, we can see activate your accounts. And if they click on this, we can then go ahead and activate the accounts and they will then be registered on our community website. Next right here, we have the activation key. Now this is optional, but your users will have to activate their activation key. So they'll click on activate and that's it. The account is now active and they can now go ahead and log in and join your community website. So right here, I'll click on login. All right, so now I'll go ahead and log into the website for the very first time. And here we go. So now we have Jeremy, and now you can see right here, we have to put in our profile photo and also our cover photo as well. And they can go ahead and engage in the community. They can like, and they can comment on whatever they want. So here I'll put like a, you know, thanks. And we can post that. They can also post pictures and they can also post GIFs as well if you allow that. 
So now we have a new user registered to the website, and that's kind of how the process works when users sign up for your community websites. But uh, first, let's go ahead and go to emails here. And I do want to talk about emails really quick. So when your users do something, like when they, um, you know, when they get notified in their uh, email about their activity, these are the emails that are sent automatically by Buddy Boss. Now you can choose to restrict these, or you can choose to change them if you want to do that. So, uh, for example, if someone mentions someone in a group update, uh, they'll get an email right here of the site name and also the name of the group. And um, yeah, you guys can go through with these options. Like for example, verify your new address. So here we have the email and you guys can actually change the content within the email here. You can change the message. And what I really do like on the right side, we have situation. Now, if you wanna turn these emails off, instead of actually trashing them, you can just take off the situation. So this email will only send if someone has changed their email address, something like that and you can create new emails from scratch and you can click on the situations of, um, you know, if you wanna create your emails from scratch. So I do like this option, you know, and they have a lot of different situations and they have most of them covered here. So you guys can go ahead and change and adjust your emails at any time, or if you do not want them to send, you can just go ahead and uncheck that. However, you really do wanna make sure this is checked for verifying your email address because then they will not be able to register on your website. So make sure that's checked. And uh, right here, I'll click on update. Now you guys can also customize your emails as well. So right here we have the customized layouts and this is where you can customize the emails that are being sent to users. So under the header, you can change the logo, you can change the site title color, and you guys can go through a lot of these options. So you do wanna make sure that you upload your logo in the header section, because if not, it's just gonna say like my website and it's not gonna look clean and it's not gonna really make a lot of sense. So you do wanna go through these options here in the email and make sure that you at least add in your logo to your emails, because remember, this will be sent to every single email when a user uh, creates a new account or whatever uh, email preference they have on your community website. So make sure you add in a logo to your emails, something like that. So I just added my logo and we can adjust the size here. So I think that looks a lot better. So I'll go ahead and click on publish. Now let's talk about email notifications. Now, when your users sign up to your website, they're gonna get a lot of email notifications. So when they join a group, when someone mentions them, when someone likes their status, they're gonna get notified via email and that can be a little spammy and users might complain about it. Now, instead of disabling all the emails on your website, your users actually have the ability to restrict emails that come from your community websites. So let me go ahead and show you this right here because I actually found, out, found this out just by trial and error. So you'll go to your account and email preferences and here your users can actually go ahead and adjust their uh, account preferences and here we have the email preferences so they can turn these emails off because it will get really annoying like let's say f for example you know uh, the group information is updated you don't really need an email for that right so you can turn that off by pressing no and that makes a whole lot more sense so your users can again adjust these and then click on save changes this way your users will not be bombarded with emails coming from your website all right, so now that I've shown you guys that, now let's talk about how you can manually approve users and manually add users to your community websites. Now, when a user signs up to your community website, guys, sometimes the email might not send, it might go to spam, and it can just leave a lot of frustration and a lot of people saying, hey man, what's going on with your website? It sucks, you know? So uh, in case that happens, let me talk about how you can manually add users to your community websites. So right here we have users, now we have pending signups, but we'll come back to that in just a bit, and that's very important. So right here, we'll click on add new, and here you'll go ahead and add in a user. So let's say your friend John could not get up, you know, cannot sign up for the website. Here I'll put Johnny, right? And we will also notify him of the actual, uh, the role, you know, just tell him, hey man, we signed you up to the website, here you go. So here I'll just put John, and I will add this new user. All right, cool, so now we have Johnny, and Johnny is now on our website, okay? Now, right here we have pending signups. Now, whenever a user has registered to your website but didn't get their email or something like that, they will all be displayed right here. So I'll go ahead and give you a quick example of someone who cannot find their email, yet they are currently pending registration.
All right, so here we can see someone has tried to actively register for our website, yet uh, maybe they didn't get the email or something like that. This is where you can activate their accounts. So let's say, for example, someone signs up and says, hey, Daryl, I tried to register, but I never got the email or something went wrong. You can click on activate, and then you can activate their profile to your uh, community websites. So this way, this is a lot easier. So in case users can't you know, find their email or whatever, you can always add them there. All right, so at this point, we are done with the registration process. So I think now you know how the registration process works and you also know how to manage members on your community websites. Now, we will come back to registration a little bit later at the end of the video. And we'll be talking about like how to have a normal landing page, yet also integrates your community website inside of your website. So you might want users to register maybe somewhere on your, you know, on your actual website. And we'll talk about how you can uh, create a page like this and then maybe add your community website as a subdomain instead of the actual uh, front page of your website. So again, there's just various ways on how you can approach your website. And I'll talk more about the advanced registration a little bit later in the video. But in this next section, we'll be talking about how to add special features to your community websites, like making products and also courses. Hey guys, so before going any further, I do want to introduce you all to one other service that Buddy Boss offers, and that is app development. Now, when you create your community website, you might want to have an application for it that makes you look kind of a little bit more professional. And Buddy Boss will actually create an application for your community website, and they'll help you publish it on the iOS and the Android uh, market. So if you are interested in this service, I will leave a link below, and I'll try to get a coupon code for this specific um, service. Also, if you guys don't want to use that, you guys can watch my other video and use a website called App My Site. You guys can build your application using this service. I think it's around like 150 to 200 bucks uh, for the entire year. It's not too expensive. So if that's something that you want to consider, I will go ahead and leave this tutorial and also leave a link below to purchase the app development plan. So with that said, let's go back to the tutorial. All right, all right. So now that you guys have a good understanding of how to build your community website, let's go ahead and move on to the next section and start adding in special features to your community website, like selling products on your community website. It's really easy to get started. You can sell as many products as you want for any price. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into it. All right, party people, in this section, I'll be showing you guys how you can add products to your community website. Now we're gonna install a free plugin and this is really simple to get started. So the first thing you guys will do, obviously, for those of you who don't know, we will install the WooCommerce plugin. The WooCommerce plugin is like the industry standard for e-commerce with WordPress. So over here under plugins, we'll click on add new. And under search plugins, you'll type in WooCommerce. All right, and here we go, 5 million active installs. We'll click on install now, and then we'll click on activate. All right, cool. Now, if you guys did get a welcome screen, uh, you guys can click on skip this step at the bottom and it'll bring you back to your plugin section. So now that we have WooCommerce installed, we can start creating products for our community website. So on the left side, you're gonna see products. And if we click on all products right here, uh, we should have no products. So this is where all your products will be displayed. So we can click on add new, and also add new, it's the same thing, so add new. Now in this video, I'm only gonna cover a simple product. There are a lot of different other products you can create, like group products, uh, here, let me scroll down here. We have you know variable product, affiliate products, external products. However, I have already created a whole nother video on uh, WooCommerce where I cover all the products, all the shipping, all the taxes, everything that you possibly need to know about WooCommerce. And I'll leave this video in the description below so you guys can check that out on your own free time. But uh, I'll just go ahead and walk you through on how to create simple products, which are pretty simple, right? So here I'll type in uh, coffee mugs, right? Coffee mugs, coffee mugs, you know, for, uh, I don't know, just coffee mugs. Now here we actually have the uh, long tail description. All right, so here's an example product here. And what I'll do is I'll scroll down. Now here we have the long tail description. So whatever you type on the uh, this section here, it's going to appear below the product. So this would be something like the material, uh, made in India, made in China, made in America. If you wanna put any specs about the product or any warranties, uh, this is where you would label it. And here we'll scroll down and we have a simple product, right? And we have a regular price of $100. But the coffee mug is on sale for 50 bucks. And you can also schedule a sale. So if you want the sale to run from, you know, for about a week or something like that, uh, you can add a specific uh, sale date. 
Here we have inventory, so you can actually make sure that this is in stock or out of stock, or you can allow back orders if you do not have any stocks. Let's say, for example, you only have 20 coffee mugs. You can put in that you only have 20 coffee mugs, and the users will see how many are available in your shop. Next, we have shipping. Here you can put the, uh, the weights and the dimensions of the products. Linked products, these are upsells and cross-sells. Now, I'm not gonna cover it, but uh, upsells are basically products that you recommend when someone's currently viewing this product. Like, for example, Amazon has that, uh, you know, what you may also like. Cross-sells is what you recommend at checkout. So when the user's about to check out, you can recommend additional products during checkout. And uh, I talk more about upsells and cross-sells in this video. But uh, yeah, that's that. And what I'll do next is I'll scroll down and this is our product short description. Now this description is important and this is what's going to be displayed right here. So you wanna make sure that, uh, you know, that you put something that represents your product and uh, you know, that you give a good description about your product because this is the first description users will see when they click on your product. All right, so I'll just go ahead and paste in some demo text. Here we have the product image. So let's click on select product image. And what you'll need to do is upload your image product. Here I have the coffee mugs. So you can go ahead and upload an image of your current product. I'll click on set product image. Also, if you guys have um, other images of the product, you guys can put it there. Like for example, let's say you have like, uh, you know, different angles of the product or you have different shots or something like that. You can add multiple um, images to your product gallery, right? Next we have product categories. So here you'd want to create a product category. So for example, if you're selling only coffee mugs or you want to sell headphones or anything else, you'd want to create a category for each product. So you can kind of put all your products in specific categories to make the process a lot easier down the road. So now that that's all done, what I'll do is click on publish. All right, cool. And let's go ahead and take a look at our product. So here I'll click on view products and there we go. So we have our coffee mugs, right? We have our description of the product. You can see we have the uh, the availability right there, 20 in stock and the category of mugs. So remember, whenever someone clicks on mugs, it'll bring them to a category page where all those products will be in that specific category. So that's why you wanna create categories. You know, it makes your shop a lot more convenient and a lot more cleaner. And then scrolling down here, obviously we have those uh, the photo gallery. So you can put in images for your photo gallery. And then at the bottom, we have the long tail description which again, you can put like the material, uh, return policy, whatever you wanna put that's like technical that you wanna you know, put in there, this would be the long tail description, all right? So we have created a product, right? Pretty simple. Now what I'll do here is I'll click on the logo. So on the right side, you can see I've already added products to our sidebar. So now that we installed the WooCommerce plugin, we're gonna get additional uh, widgets that we can add to our community websites. So let's click on customize here. Next, we'll go ahead and click on widgets. Now, when you install the WooCommerce plugin, you will get uh, access to additional widgets. So here, I'll click on add a widget. You can see I've already added the products here. And if we just type in, uh, actually, no, if you just scroll down, we'll actually see it. So we have a filter product by attributes. These are filters. So you probably don't wanna add this to your front page. However, you have product categories, products, product by rating, um, product search, eh, I wouldn't add that either to your front page. I would add something like product categories, products, or product by rating, which shows your most uh, best rated products on your store. So that's probably good to have on your homepage so people can keep purchasing uh, your products. So that's how you can add your products to your homepage. So you can just add that widget here. You can see I've added in the uh, products and you can change the title, you know, like, uh, you know, our, uh, our store, you know, or something like that and you can put the number of products, you can hide free products, and so on and so forth with all these options. So that's how you guys can kind of add a products to your uh, community website. So over here, I'll click on publish. Now, one thing you might also wanna do is you might also want to add the shop page to your menu. So just remember that when you install WooCommerce, uh, it creates a shop page and all the pages for you automatically. And on the left side, you can see we have the shop page and I've also added the cart and the checkout. So uh, let's say for example, they click on shop, they can just go directly to the shop without having to uh, click on the sidebar. So this way, it's just another way to make money. You know, that's really what it's all about. Um, that's probably why you're all making this, right? You all wanna make money. 
Now, uh, what I'll do here is I'll go ahead and show you how to add it to the menu really quick. So over here under my blog, I'll click on menus. And here we have pages, right? But I can click on view all. And you can see we have these new pages like the cart, the checkouts. Uh, all you need to do here is just go ahead and click on the shop and then add it to the menu. And then you'll see it added to the menu. So you see I have two shops now. And then you kind of rearrange it. So you can put it wherever you want. Um, also, if you want to create a drop down menu, you can also do that. So I'll go ahead and remove this. So let's say, for example, you don't want to have the cart on the menu. You can actually drag it below shop. And now it is a. Um, now it's a drop down menu. So it'll only be displayed when people hover over shop, then they'll be able to see their cart and checkout just to make your menu a little bit more cleaner and nicer. You can also add product categories like the mugs, for example. You can also add product tags and um, even products if you want to recommend specific products on your menu if you want to go that route. All right, so that's pretty much all I'm going to cover for the uh, WooCommerce section of adding products. Now, if you guys do need help with shipping and taxes, uh, again, uh, this video is two hours long and I've actually made timestamps for this video. So you guys can just jump to any part of this video at any time to help you guys out just to, you know, just to get the parts that you need or the information that you need. But now that we actually have products, let's now add payment gateways onto our uh, WooCommerce website because uh, we need to be able to take payments, right? So I'll show you guys how you guys can accept money with PayPal and also Stripe. So if you don't have a PayPal account, not to worry, I will walk you through with Stripe where users can enter in uh, their credit card info. So over here under WooCommerce, you'll click on settings. And setting up PayPal is really, really simple. Now, before we do that really quick, I just wanna make sure that you change your country. So this is where you can change your country and also where you can change your currency. So mine is the US dollar. So I'll put US dollar. I don't know why WooCommerce by default has it in pounds. You know, I think that's kind of really annoying. They should probably put it in dollar because a lot of the countries in the world, um, they sell products and people buy it in the dollar. They don't really buy it in the pound. So it's just, it's just tedious. But um, anyways, you'll go over here to payments. And here we have PayPal standard. So just go ahead and activate PayPal standard, right? Make sure it's enabled. And then you'll click on manage. And then right here, you'll go ahead and enable PayPal standard. And this is where you'll put in your PayPal email. Now it's really simple guys. All you need to do is make an account with PayPal. And whenever you sign up with PayPal, you will take that same email address and then you'll put it right here and it's automatically linked up to your PayPal account. It's really, really simple to get started with PayPal. And PayPal is growing. I mean, these guys have, their stock has grown 39% in a year. So a lot of people do use PayPal. So I highly recommend that you add PayPal and Stripe on your uh, e-commerce website. So that's it, that's the whole process. You'll have to make a free account. It doesn't cost you anything to get started with PayPal. You guys can get started with a personal account and then later upgrade to a business if you wanna do that. So now that we have PayPal installed, let's now install the Stripe plugin. So over here, we're gonna go to plugins and go to add new. So what we're gonna do next is we are going to um, accept credit cards on our website with Stripe, all right? So here, just type in Stripe. It sounds like strip, but it's it's Stripe. Yeah, it's weird. And this is the payment gateway that we'll need. It is the WooCommerce Stripe payment gateway. So just click on install now, and then you'll click on activate. All right, cool. So now that we have Stripe enabled, we can now um, enable Stripe on our e-commerce website. So over here under WooCommerce, we'll go to settings. And we'll click on payments. And now you'll see we have a lot more payment gateways. You know, Stripe is pretty popular in all these different countries. Um, it works with Alipay, Multibanco. I mean, all these payment gateways. I have no idea where these people are, or these gateways are located. I don't know what country, but I'm just going to enable Stripe right here, credit card, and I'll enable this. All right. And then on the right side, I'll click on setup. All right, cool. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make sure Stripe is enabled, right? Now here we have test mode. So uh, you can actually run test transactions on your website to make sure that Stripe is working. Now you guys will need to go to stripe.com. Okay, so go to stripe.com. I'll leave a link in the description below this video. And you guys will need to sign up and make an account with Stripe. It's completely free. It does not cost you anything at all. So this is the current page. And right here, you'll click on sign up. 
Now, again, you'll have to go through the steps of creating an account. It will take like a few minutes. They want to, you know, verify some information. They want to go ahead and verify your identity. So you'll go through the process of creating an account. Now, once you do that, you'll be brought to your dashboard. All right, so it should, be, it should look something like this, you know, like not 100%, but something like this. So on the left side, you'll see view test data. You can turn this on and then you can actually run test transactions on your websites. So uh, over here we have developers and we have API keys. Now, don't worry, I know it says developers, but guys, it's really simple. You just copy and paste this stuff and you're done, that's it. So right here we have publishable key, right? I copied that, I'll go back to our websites. I will paste this right there, okay? And then we'll take the secret key and I will paste it there. Now below that, we have this webhook endpoints and we'll need to go ahead and copy and paste this into Stripe. So I'll go ahead and grab this URL and copy it. We're gonna go back to Stripe here and on the left side, you're gonna see webhooks. So go ahead and click on webhooks and we're gonna add an endpoints. So click on add an endpoints. Now this part where it says endpoint URL, you're just gonna paste uh, what they gave us in the WooCommerce settings. So you're gonna paste this URL right here and for the description, just explain to them why you're using this. So this is to accept payments on our website. Now we have events to send. So if we click on select events, we're gonna scroll down and we're gonna see charge captured. So we're using this endpoint just to accept payments. Once that's done, we'll click on add an endpoint. All right, cool. So once that's done, we'll see the signing secret. So click on click to reveal. I know this is somewhat of a tedious process. This is actually quite new for Stripe. I'll copy this and we're gonna paste this into our test webhook secret. So I'll go ahead and paste it there. All right, and we're done. Now, one thing you might wanna add as well, statement descriptor, you might want to explain who this is and who is charging you. So this is the DW tutorial website. This is also an inline credit card form. It's just a different way to display the transaction and a different way to capture payments. So you can enable that or disable that, it doesn't really matter. And we'll go ahead and scroll down and click on save changes and we're done. So now let's run a test transaction on our community website. So we have our coffee mugs right here, right? So I'll click on coffee mugs. I will add this to the cart. I will then view the cart. All right, so I fill in my billing details. And here we have the option with PayPal and we also have the option with Stripe. So now test mode is enabled. So I'll just go ahead and enter in some uh, credentials here. All right, and I'll click on place order. And congratulations, we have now made money on our website. So the order was confirmed. You can see we have this uh, order confirm page. Now your users will get an email notifying them of their purchase receipts. And you will also get an email notifying you of a new order, so congrats. Now let's go ahead and go back to our website here and let's see if that transaction actually took place in our Stripe account. So the total was for 50 bucks, right? So let's go over here to home. So here's my Stripe account. And as you guys can see, I do have other sales. So it's kind of hard to see if it was accepted or not. So in this case, I'll click on payments and now you'll see a list of all of the payments. So we have the order for 50 bucks. It was succeeded. And now we have received money from our community websites. So that's all it takes. Congratulations on making money on your community website. So at this point, guys, uh, this part of the video is done. I've showed you guys how to create single products and upload them to your community website. If you guys do need more help, you guys can always go ahead and check out that WooCommerce tutorial. Now also, I did mention that you can turn your community website into a multi-vendor e-commerce website. So you guys can use the WC Vendors plugin. I believe BuddyBoss and WC Vendors are compatible. So you guys can go ahead and integrate this with your community website where that will give users the ability to start uploading products on your community websites. And then from there, you can take a commission of that product sale. So if you wanna go that route, you guys can use this plugin. I'm not gonna cover the WooCommerce vendors in this video because again, um, this video can easily get like very, very long if I keep adding in huge sections. So I will refer you to those areas if you want to enable those features on your community websites. 
So let's go ahead and move on to the next section of adding courses to our community website. So selling products on your community website is really simple. Now, in this next section, I'll be showing you how to create and sell courses on your community website. We're gonna be using a third-party plugin called LearnDash, and it integrates really well with BuddyBoss. So let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, so in this section, guys, I'll be showing you how you can add courses to your community website. Now, you can offer free and also paid courses. So you can see here under my courses page, I have a list of uh, courses. I have the Fake Guru course, How to Grow YouTube channel, and the Amazing Yoga course. So you can sell whatever you want. You can put videos inside your course or just plain text. Now, also what I've done is I've actually added uh, courses to my menu. So you can add courses to your menu. You can also add specific courses to your menu. Like you don't want a courses page, you can just add the entire course to the menu directly. So here, for example, I'll click on the Amazing Yoga course, and then your users can actually see the course right away and enroll in the course. They can also click on a preview here and they can get like a preview of your course. So if you wanna give them like a preview of what they will learn, you can also put that in your course description. Also here on the homepage, there's a widget where we can now add courses to our uh, page. So let's say, for example, uh, someone's here and they're new, they'll just click on you know this course, they wanna check it out, and then they can also enroll in the course this way. So there's a few ways in how you can approach adding courses to your website. And um, I'll go ahead and walk you through what plugin you'll need and I'll give you a brief overview on how to use the plugin. Now, I'm not gonna cover everything about LearnDash in this video. However, I'll give you a good overview about it so you can walk away still knowing how to use the plugin. Now, there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to, oh no, not this page. <laughs> It'll take you to this page. So this is LearnDash and um, Buddy Boss has a lot of LearnDash integrations that work really well with each other. Uh, at the current moment, I don't have a coupon code. However, I will try to get you guys a coupon code. And when I do get that coupon code, I'll put it in the description below in this video. If they decide to give it to me, some companies do, some companies don't. So once you get here, you'll click on pricing. And here you have the pricing options. Now you can get one website license, uh, 10 website licenses, or 25 licenses. Now guys, I've, I'll be very honest. I, I've tried to use other uh, other plugins with Buddy Boss, and they just don't integrate well. In fact, Buddy Boss, they have a specific uh, integration just for uh, LearnDash. So there is Lifter LMS, you know, that's also a, a plugin that I use. However, it doesn't integrate well with Buddy Boss, and I highly recommend using LearnDash than any other LMS platform because, uh, again, LearnDash just has the best integrations, and it's made for Buddy Boss or Buddy Boss is made for LearnDash, whatever. They're, they work well, you know? So here we have the one site, the 10 and the 25. So just go ahead and select a package that works for you. You'll just click on add to cart. Also keep in mind, guys, they do have a 30 day money back guarantee. So again, if this just does not work out for you, you guys can always get your money back 100% guaranteed. And um, yeah, so that's always nice to know. So once you go ahead and fill out your information, you will click on submit order. I think they do have an area for coupon codes. I don't know, maybe they took it away or maybe I can have them attach it to my link and, and we'll go from there or something like that. But uh, anyways, once you guys actually purchase LearnDash, you guys will go to your dashboard. And this is the plugin that you'll need. So you'll go ahead and click on download. All right, download, and then it'll go ahead and download the plugin. Now you don't have to purchase LearnDash right now. I can just go ahead and give you an overview of how it works. However, if you do uh, plan on using LearnDash or adding courses to your website, I think LearnDash is the best one for this specific website. So let's go back over here. I'll go ahead and go to our websites and I will upload the plugin. So let's go over here to dashboard and under plugins, I'll click on add new. So now I'll go ahead and upload the LearnDash plugin. So upload plugin, browse file, and it is, where is it, where is it? It's under downloads, here we go. Learn Dash. There we go. Open and install now. All right, and once it's done, we'll click on Activate Plugin. All right, cool. So we have just installed Learn Dash. Now, if you guys want, you guys can go to their mini boot camp and you can go through their little tutorials. I recommend it. You know, they have some pretty helpful tutorials. And after using Learn Dash for just like a few hours, you guys will master. It's pretty pretty simple. But I'll just dismiss this for now. Here we can enter in our license code. So if you guys do need to enter in your license code, you can click on here and then you can insert your email and then your license and then you can update your license right here. All right, so I entered my LearnDash license key 
And now on the left side, we'll have some options. So we have courses, lessons, topics, quizzes, questions, and all of this stuff right here. But uh, first what we'll do is we'll click on courses. Now, whenever you guys make a course, it will be displayed right here. So let's just go ahead and make a quick course. We'll add in some lessons and topics, and then we'll go from there. So right here, let's click on add your first course. So what kind of course do you wanna make? Well, for this video, I'll just do something very basic. I'll just say I'm doing you know, a, a, a yoga course or something like that. So yoga course for beginners. And then here I'll click on publish and publish. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up my other course and I'm gonna show you where this content will appear on your courses page. So here we have this course, right? How to grow a YouTube channel. So this is the name of the course. Here we have some description about the course. You know, you can put in anything about your course, uh, but here we have growing a YouTube channel. And then here I just added in some more content. So this will be displayed on the course short description. So the course short description will be displayed right here. All right, so just make sure that it's something that relates to your specific course. So here I'll put in, um, this is a course about yoga for beginners. Now, this is the course content, and this is where you can basically tell people what will be inside of the course. So what they should expect to learn, um, anything that you want to include in your course. And this right here will be displayed on the bottom. All right, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and copy this. Go back over here and I will put in some more information right there. All right. So that's just a general overview of, um, you know, where your where the text will be displayed and everything else. Now, you guys, again, can use the actual page builder by adding blocks right here to enter more information about your course. But I don't want to get into Gutenberg because well, this course can easily or <laughs> this part can easily go on for another two hours. And I don't want to do that to you guys. Now, let's say, for example, you guys want to add in a URL. So let's say, for example, someone comes over here and they click on this image, you guys can actually have a pop-up video like that. So you can go ahead and link uh, your URL video to your courses. So what I'll do is I'll go back over here and I will paste in that YouTube video and I will now update the course. All right, so now let's go ahead and just have a quick look at what we've done to our course. So I'll click on preview, preview in a new tab. All right, so we have yoga course for beginners. This is a course for beginners. And then here we have that description uh, that we added earlier. So now that we've actually had our description, all we need to do now is we need to add a cover banner and also a featured image for our course. So let's do that. Let's go back over here. And here we have the featured image. So remember the featured image is going to be displayed uh, for your course. So it's going to be the first image they see that represents your course. So you do want to find an image that represents your course uh, so people can register easier. So I will go ahead and upload a course here under my desktop, the yoga girl. So this is the image that they're going to see when they see my course. This is my featured image. So I will set this as a featured image. So next we have the cover photo and this will be displayed behind the featured image. So I'll go ahead and select a cover photo. All right, now let's take a quick look at our course now. So now I think it probably looks a lot better. So yeah, this looks a lot nicer. You know, these are obviously demo images, but here we have a featured image of the course. We have this background and it just looks a lot cleaner and they can always uh, click on start course and they can register for the course. So now that we've created a course, let's now create some lessons for our courses, which I think are, you know, the most important. Uh, let's go back over here to our dashboard. We'll go to Learn Dash, and then right here, we'll click on Lessons. So we have courses, right? But what is inside the course? We need to create lessons for the course. So here, I'll click on Add Your First Lesson. Now, what's the lesson title? Well, since this is a beginning part, I'll just be like Intro to Yoga. And this is where you can put all of the content for your course. So what is inside Intro to Yoga, right? You can put, um, you know, stretching or whatever else you want to put. Remember, you can also put in videos. So let's say, for example, you want to put in a video here. We can click on this plus block and here we'll type in video and we can insert like a YouTube video or you can insert anything else, you know, any of these other, um, you know, any of these other widgets. So, for example, let's say you have a video you want to put in. You can make private specifically for your, um, you know, your courses. You can display it right here and then we'll click on embed. 
So here, like for example, you can make a video on Vimeo or anywhere else. And then, you know, below that, we can talk about the course, the course, we welcome to our course. So I'm not really sure how you wanna approach it. You know, you can have a lot of text, you know, if you're like a teacher and you wanna have a lot of text, you can go ahead and do that. You can also add downloadable files as well inside of your courses, and it's really simple. So for example, like a download here, maybe during your course, you wanna add in some downloadable files here, we can insert this link, and then you can insert whatever file that you want on your, um, your course website. Now let's say for example, you wanna add like a downloadable file, like a PDF or something where users can, you know, maybe a syllabus. Under this plus icon, I can type in file right here. And under file, I can then go ahead and upload this file. So let's say for example, I'll upload something here. I'll upload this JPEG image just for total purposes. And I'll open that. So now the users can actually download the file and this will be like the course syllabus. So course, syllabus and they can go ahead and download that so you can add videos you can add text and you can add downloadable links to your uh your lessons now you guys can kind of go through this and check out their other blocks they have a learn dash block they have all these other blocks that you can add on your uh, community website now i'm not going to go into detail on all of these because these are you know these can get really diverse and this can get really complex really really fast so i just want to keep this simple because this video is not about learn dash it's about making a community website i will be having a separate video on learn dash i'm sorry to say guys i don't have a tutorial on learn dash specifically yet but i will be making that very very soon so after you add in all of your content and everything i think we're all ready to go so um yeah at this point we can click on publish so over here i'll click on publish and publish all right, so I have intro to yoga. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make a second lesson just to speed up this tutorial. All right, so I went ahead and I made some lessons. Now we have three different lessons here. So I have intro to yoga, best foods for yoga, and then my outro, like things to consider. Now, now that we've made lessons, we can actually add topics inside of the lessons. So this can be something like intro to yoga, and then you can talk about stretches, you can talk about exercises, best foods for yoga, we can include topics like foods to avoid, foods to eat for yoga, uh, best drinks for yoga, and drinks not to have uh, with yoga. So over here, I'll click on topics, and then I'll add my first topic. All right, so for the intro for yoga, I wanna do something like the best exercises to start with. And then here, I can enter in some content about the you know, the topic, if I wanna do that, and click on publish and publish. All right, so I now have a topic. So now that we've made these lessons and topics, now let's add them to our course. So over here under courses, we have the yoga course for beginners, right? So now let's go ahead and click on builder. So here we have our builder and the builder's pretty simple to learn. And at first it might be intimidating, but it's pretty simple. So we've made these lessons on the right side. So we have lessons, topics, and also quizzes. So now that we made, we made our lessons and topics, we can now add them inside the course. So for example, intro to yoga would be our first lesson, right? So I'll add intro to yoga. All right, and then here they can access the you know intro to yoga, whatever you put on that specific lesson. Now let's say for example, you wanna add topics inside of that lesson. So over here we have topics, right? and we have all of our topics. So I'll click on this topic and I'll click on add. So now you'll see that the topic is added inside of the lesson. So this essentially is a chapter. So this will be like chapter one yoga, and then you can talk about all the topics. Now, it really depends on how you wanna approach your course website. You don't even need to even have topics if you don't want to. So for example, let's say you just say, you know what, I don't want, I don't want topics. You know, we can just go ahead and just, at each lesson, and then we can just have a bunch of different lessons. You can also do that if you wanna approach that. You know, there's really no right or wrong way on how to add courses to your community website. But um, you guys can see here that we have intro to yoga. Uh, I can add the best food for yoga, and then, you know, lesson one or whatever, and that can be the entire course if you wanna approach that. So again, um, this part kind of really determines on how you wanna approach your courses. I'm just giving you different options. Now, you can also add quizzes as well. So there was a quiz section where you can add quizzes and all sorts of other stuff. 
But I don't want to get too deep into Learn Dash because, again, this video can be very, very long. So uh, for now, I'll just go ahead and publish this. However, I will rearrange this like that and then click on Publish and Publish. All right, so at this point, the users can now take our course. So let's take it for a test run. Let's go back over here to our courses page. I'll refresh this page. All right, so we have yoga course for beginners. We have description of the course. Uh, they can click on the video, but let's just go ahead and start the course. So I'll click on start course. And here we go. So we have intro to yoga, right? And we have the video. They have the course syllabus where they can download. And after they're done, they can click on mark completed. Now, after they are done with the first lesson, it'll take them to the second lesson. So here we have the best foods for yoga, and then we can read all about lesson two. And if they are done with that, they can mark completed. And lastly, you know, things to consider. So this would be like the last chapter of our course. We can go ahead and get some information about it and then also mark that as completed. And congratulations, the users are now complete with the course and everything is all done. So I think at this point, the last question is, well, Daryl, we made the course. How do we make money from this course, right? Well, we can go ahead and adjust that in our settings. So I've walked you through on how to create a course. And again, you guys can kind of learn a little bit about Lifter LMS just by messing around with all these settings. But uh, I've showed you guys like the, like the primary information you need to know about lessons and topics. There's also quizzes, questions, you know, groups, and you can also make certificates as well and even assignments. So let's go ahead and talk about payments. So now that you're a little familiar with LearnDash, let's add in some payments. The first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is go to add-ons here. So here are the LearnDash add-ons and they have tons of integrations for um, LearnDash. You know, they have LearnDash notifications, uh, all these different add-ons. And there's, you know, there's so much we can cover here, but all you need to do is under Stripe for LearnDash, you'll click on install now. Remember earlier how we used a Stripe for the actual um, WooCommerce plugin? Well, we're gonna do the same thing here. So I can click on activate plugin. All right, so now we have enabled Stripe on our um, community websites for LearnDash. So let's go ahead and go over here to LearnDash and go to settings. So this is how we can accept payments on our community websites with selling courses. So we have the PayPal settings, right? Now, I already covered PayPal in the previous section of this video. So if you guys do need help with PayPal, you'll just go ahead and enter in your PayPal email address here. And then this will automatically sync up with um, LearnDash and PayPal. So I'll click on save. So now our courses are integrated with PayPal. Now over here, we'll click on Stripe. All right, so I will enable test mode for Stripe and I'll go to my Stripe accounts and I'll just go ahead and copy and paste this and now it's all synced up and now I can accept credit cards on my websites. Secret key, just like we did before. All right, so now that we entered in our publishable key and our secret key, just like the WooCommerce options earlier, we need to add in an endpoint secret. So what I'll do right here is we're gonna go ahead and copy this link. We're gonna go back to Stripe and under the webhooks, I'll click on webhooks and I'm gonna add an endpoint. So the same thing here, I'll go ahead and paste this. And for the description, this is used to accept payments for our courses. And for the events to send, I wanna put the charge captured and I wanna add an endpoint. All right, and we're gonna take this URL right here. I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna paste it in the endpoint secret. So next, let's go back to our courses. So let's click on courses. And I will click on the yoga course for beginners. So this is the course that we just made. So I'll click on edit. And on the top right here, we have settings. So go ahead and click on settings. So here we have the course management. So there are a lot of options here that you guys can check out later. Uh, however, the only thing I want to do, so go ahead and click on edit. So here is our courses. Now on the course that you wanna charge money for, just go ahead and click on edit. All right, cool. Now, once you're inside of the course, you will see this settings tab. So if I click on settings right here, you will then get a list of options. So you can add course materials. If you created cer uh, course certificates, you can now add them to this course. And uh, once they complete the course, they will get a certificate. But um, you guys can go ahead and check out these other options. The only thing that I really want to show you is the access mode. So here we have open. At this point, the course can be accessed by anybody. We can also have it as a free course. 
Now, it's still a free course. However, people will need to be registered on the website in order to get access to this free course. We also have Buy Now. So this is where we can charge a specific price for the course. So I'll just say this is $199.99. And remember, it's integrated with PayPal and Stripe, and we have already done that. So at this point, we're just going to take the money. You can also add a recurring payment. So if you want to have a recurring payment, you guys can say you can have access to this course for $20. For $20, I'm going to do every 30 days or something like that. Or there we go. So we'll just do, I don't know, every 30 days, you'll get billed 20 bucks. And that's it. So that's if you want to have a recurring membership. Um, again, this is your community website. This is up to you. I really can't tell you what to do. I'm just the guy, you know, I'm just the waiter. I'm just over here, you know, delivering the drinks. So here, let's just do uh, buy now. And I'll just do the course price of 189.99. And I'll click on update. All right, cool. So now that that's done, let's go ahead and test this out. So let's go ahead and click on back to courses. So at this point, we're about 90% on the way to accept payments. We can take payments on our website, but we do need to create a return URL. So what I recommend doing is creating a page specifically like a thank you page or something like that. Now over here, you'll go to pages and go to add new. So for the title, we'll just type in thank you page, just so that we know this is the thank you page and we'll click on publish and publish. Now you have a few different options here. You guys can use the default editor Gutenberg in order to create your thank you page. And if you are going to use Gutenberg, I recommend that you display the list of courses. So for the learn dash, what you'll need to do is you will need to actually have the course list. So what this will do is that this will display the course list. So after they purchase the actual uh, course, it'll then redirect them to the course page and they can click on the course and then they can access the course. So that's the best way I think to approach it. However, I will also show you how to create a stylish thank you page where you can use Elementor and you can also get free templates because that's included with the purchase of Buddy Boss. So in case you guys are brand new, let's go ahead and go to our plugins, plugins, add new. And under search plugins, you'll type in Elementor. All right, and this is the plugin that you'll need. So you can go ahead and click on activate and then you can install this plugin. Now, once you install and activate this plugin, we can then go back to our page that we created and then we can activate the builder. So all pages, I'll scroll down to the thank you page and I'll click on view. So as you guys can see, this page is empty and we need to add something to it. So right here, let's click on edit page. And at the very top, it says edit with Elementor. Let's go ahead and click on edit with Elementor. All right, so what's really cool about Buddy Boss is that it has an integration. I don't know what that is. So it has an integration for uh, Elementor. So right here, click on the Buddy Boss icon and Buddy Boss has created specific templates uh, specifically for Elementor. That's why I kind of recommend using Elementor here because you can go ahead and insert all of these templates on your uh, page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this one and click on inserts. Now Elementor is really simple to use and if you guys do need help with Elementor, I do have a full another video on this page builder but you guys don't really need to watch it to be, to be honest. Uh, you guys can just go ahead and insert stuff right here and drag and drop, it's really simple to use. And uh, I feel like this is a lot easier than using Gutenberg but Gutenberg is also improving but at the current moment of making this video, I still recommend Elementor over Gutenberg because this is just a lot more convenient and easier to use. So I will change hello there to thank you, right? Thank you. And if we go to the Learn Dash website and I'll actually leave this page in the description below of this video. So what I wanna do here is I wanna use these short codes they give us and I wanna actually display the list of my courses. So right here we have Learn Dash course list. I wanna go ahead and copy this and I want to uh, put this in my courses page. Now, this is where things can get very dynamic. You can lead them back to your courses page. Uh, you can lead them to various parts of your website. So for example, you can just put thank you and then you can actually change this button URL right here and bring them back to their courses page. It really depends on how you want to design and customize everything. But let me just give you an example of uh, what I'm gonna do here. So I'll just go ahead and um, paste this and then I'll, I'll press enter and it's gonna go back to courses 
page, right? And uh, I'll just click on update and I'll click on preview changes. So this is what it's gonna look like. So it'll say thank you, go back to the courses page and then they can go ahead and click on the course. Now I might need to do something with this button. This can be going something like back to home or this can lead them to another part of the website. So uh, you can delete this just by right clicking and delete if you wanna do that. Uh, but this part of the video, um, I really don't know how you want to approach your community website. There's hundreds of ways on how you can do this. You can lead them back to your home page. You can lead them to your courses page. Um, again, there's just a lot of different ways on how to approach this. So I hope this is helpful. I don't really, uh, I know everyone out there has a lot of different ways on how to approach it. And I think this is probably the most suitable. Um, so let's say for example, they uh, go back to your page, right? They go to your thank you page. I'll click on yoga course for beginners. It will then take them to that course and they can go ahead and enroll it. So that's an example of how you can create this process for your uh, customers. Now let's go ahead and go back here and I wanna take this thank you page and I wanna use this for the Stripe URL. So let's go back to the dashboard. I'll click on Stripe settings. And then I'll scroll down and I will paste that URL right there. And I'll click on update options. So now let's go ahead and run a live test transaction of what your customers or your community will experience when they try to purchase courses on your community website. So I'll go ahead and log in with my other user, Rachel. All right, so let's do this. Rachel has just joined the website and now she wants to enroll in our famous yoga course. So over here in her courses, we can see the course, right? So I will click on yoga course for beginners. And here we can take this course. So I'll click on take this course and we will then enter in our credit card number. Now I like this credit card uh, capture form better. It's a lot more convenient. It's very easy and fast. They do have another one, but I find that it's just very confusing and it just, I don't know, I don't like it. So there we go. All right, and here we go. Now guys, remember this is in test mode. So this is not real money, but uh, we will find out right now. So I'll go ahead and click on pay 199.99, right? All right. Awesome, so we can see the course has been, uh, or the payment has been made. And now we'll go to yoga course for beginners. So essentially what this is gonna do is this is gonna take them back to the course. And now, look at that, they can now enroll in the course. So the next step is we need to see if uh, Stripe accepted the payment. And I'll also show you the exact settings I'm using and a warning uh, if you're using a specific plugin. Now the time is, 722, you guys can see that. So let's go ahead and go back to our uh, website. All right, so we've created our courses and we have charged money for our courses. I think the last thing we need to do is we just need to apply it to our menu and we can also, again, apply it to uh, our widgets. So let's click on customize. You can actually do everything from the customize section on the theme customizer, including adding things to the menu. So this is like a, I don't know, it's like a, like it's not the cleanest way to do it, but it's just, you know, you can still do it. So here we go, menus. We have the main menu for the websites and add items. We can add our courses page here. So here you can see we add our courses and we can also add the specific course, but I'll just do courses, right? And I'll click on publish. So now we've added the courses to our menu. We can also add it as a widget on our sidebar here as well. So let's go back over here. We have widgets, directory, let's do directory left this time. And under add a widgets, I'll just type in courses. Here we go. Course. And then the courses will be available right there on the bottom of the page. It's a little, it's a little scrunched to the bottom. So let's do this, let's, let's put it higher like that. So there it is, yoga course for beginners. You can also customize the color of this in the theme style settings. So just to be clear, you can customize the text and everything else. But uh, yeah, that's done. So let's click on X. So here's my Stripe settings. And I just wanna make sure that you guys have all these settings correct. So again, make sure this is the legacy checkout. The other one, I just find it's very confusing. It's boring, it's ugly. We have our uh, endpoint secrets. We have the URL and all of these settings. So you do wanna make sure these are the same. Now let's go ahead and go back to our uh, Stripe accounts and under payments, we can see that at 7.22 PM, 
it has accepted the payment. So I have been running a lot of test transactions and just different ways on how it's to, you know, test out the payment gateway. So we can now see that our website can now start accepting payments and we can start getting paid for our courses. Now, the only way again to accept real money is just by unchecking this orange dot. And now you would just do the same process all over again. And this would be for real money. And again, you need, just need to make sure that you have an SSL on your websites. Um, you get one for free with Name Hero, and it should be automatically set on your website. So that should not be a problem. Now, there is one warning that I do want to give everybody. There is a very popular plugin called Lightspeed Caching Plugin. I use this plugin personally. I really like it. However, if you have this plugin installed on your website with uh, LearnDash and the Stripe plugin integrated, um, when the user purchases a course, it will not display for them. So it'll tell them that they have to pay again. That's why I was running so many test transactions because I actually ran into that problem and I had to actually Google what was the issue. So uh, if you are using the Lightspeed caching plugin and Lyft or LMS, I recommend you switch to a different caching plugin because this will cause conflict when people try to purchase courses on your uh, community websites. So um, yeah, that's that. I just want to let everyone know about that uh, issue. So guys, this is pretty much it for the Learn Dash section. And hopefully I made it pretty easy. So again, just go through the process of making a Stripe account, run some test transactions. And then after that, you guys should be all ready to go. So enough about this section. Let's go ahead and move on to the next section where we'll talk about how to turn this website into a membership website. We'll see you there. Welcome back guys. Now, if you want to turn your community website into a paid memberships website, in this next section, I'll be showing you how to do that. So I'll show you how to sell or offer free memberships and then sell free and paid memberships. And then I'll also show you how you can have your entire website as a paid membership website. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive into it. All right, party people. In this part of the video, I'll be showing you how to turn your community website into a membership website. Now, I spent a long time testing out various ways and I'll give you a few options on how you can turn your community website into a full-fledged membership website. Now, the first way is you can offer uh, a free membership and then you can also offer a paid membership. So for example, you can see I am on the bronze, I'm sorry, the gold membership and I have full access to the website. So I can visit the groups, I can see everything on the entire website. Now, let's say, for example, there's someone else who is on a lower tier membership that doesn't have access to all the pages. So I'll open up my other browser. And here we have Rachel. And you can see here how Rachel can access the shop. She can purchase products. She can take courses. Um, however, if she goes to the group section, she will be uh, restricted. So she cannot view this page and she does not have access to the groups. So with this membership, she'll have access to specific parts of the website. Now, there's also another membership where we can restrict the entire website from the user and they must be a paid member in order to have access to the, um, the website. So you can offer a sign up page or a sign up tier where the user must pay in order to have access to the website. And you can offer you know, one tier or you can offer several tiers. You can also make a custom page from scratch. And uh, there are some templates to help you get you started with that. Or you can use the default uh, custom page and I'll give you a few different options on how to set that up. So uh, there's various ways on how to approach this and I'll just cover the basic way. Like, you know, we have a free membership, we have a free and a pro, and then we also have a, a paid only membership. So let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Let's go ahead and go back to our website. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna have to do is that we are gonna have to purchase a plugin that will turn our website into a membership website. Now there is a link in the description of this video. It'll take you to a website called MemberPress. Now I also do have a coupon code for MemberPress and I will leave that in the description below of this video. Now MemberPress has the most integrations for BuddyBoss. So these two plugins, they work really well with each other and I'll walk you through on how to set them both up. So when you get here, go ahead and click on Get MemberPress. All right, and I'll scroll down. It looks like they hit $1 billion in membership revenue. Exciting stuff. So we have three different plans and you're gonna go ahead and pick the plan that best fits you. So this works for one website. 
uh, two websites and five websites. Now guys, keep, keep in mind that this website offers a 30 day money back guarantee for any reason whatsoever. So if you guys do not like the product and it just does not work out for you, not to worry, everything in this video uh, offers a 30 day money back guarantee. I try to only work with really reputable companies to get these offers for you guys. There are companies out there who don't give 30 day money back guarantees because they're a digital product, but MemberPress believes that you will really like their product. So once you guys uh, pick a product that works best for you, you'll go ahead and click on get started. All right, so here you'll go and you'll set up your account. So you'll just enter in your first name, your last name, yada, yada, yada. You'll put in your credit card and so on and so forth. Now, I already have the product. So what I'll do is I will meet you in the account page on the very next page. All right, and this is my MemberPress account. Now, in order to access your downloads, you will simply go ahead and click on downloads right here. And on the right side, you're gonna see download member press and then they have their version right here. So you can go ahead and click on a download. And once you have that download, we will then go ahead and upload that plugin to our current website. Now on the bottom right here, we have license key. So you can go ahead and copy and paste this license key when it asks you for your license key. So let's go ahead and go back to our website right here. Let's go back. And we'll go back to our dashboard and we'll go down to plugins and then go to add new. All right, and under Upload plugin, we'll click there, we'll click on browse, and then we'll go ahead and upload the plugin. And then I'll click on install now. All right, cool. So once you have installed the plugin, you'll then click on activate plugin. All right, so we have installed MemberPress on our website. Congrats. Now on the left side right here, you'll see MemberPress. Now you're gonna click on add-ons and we need to install the Buddy Boss add-on before we go any further, it'll kind of help us out. And this is the integration that we'll need. It's called BuddyPress integration. So BuddyBoss is a forked version of BuddyPress. So BuddyPress, BuddyBoss, they're almost the same thing. So you'll go ahead and click on install add-on. You guys can see I already have it uh, installed. So I will click on activate. They do have other add-ons you guys can check out. They have all these other, you know, convert kits and you know, Divi and Elementor and a lot of other integrations that you guys can use uh, for MemberPress. But uh, that's all I really want to install right now is just the BuddyPress integration. So now that we have that um, installed, let's go ahead and go to our memberships. So you'll see that we have all these different tabs. We have memberships, groups, rules, coupons, all of this stuff. So first let's click on memberships. So the first thing that we're gonna have to do is we need to make a membership, right? So we need to make memberships and tiers. So for this example, I'm going to use two memberships. I'm gonna have a free membership and then I'll have a pro membership. So right here, I'll click on add new. And this will be the bronze membership. Now, what does the bronze membership offer? So here you can put some information about, okay, my bronze membership will give you this, this, and this, or you will not be allowed to do this, this, and this, and so on and so forth. So this is, this is the bronze membership, no access to groups. But you guys probably want to put something a little bit more positive, right? <laughs> like uh, access to the, all, all the website, but just not the groups. You know, make it sound like more welcoming. You know, this is a bad example. But um, yeah, I'm just saying no access to groups or forums. So that's it. So this membership will then give people the option to register for the websites, but they cannot access the groups or the forums. So I'll click on publish. All right, now let's make a second membership. So over here, I'll click on add new. And this will be the gold membership. And this will give access to the whole website. So this gives access to everything, the, you know, the, the forum, the groups, everything. However, this is a paid membership. Now on the right side, you're gonna see membership terms. Now I'll just put $5. Now, $5, we can make this a one-time fee or we can make it recurring. Now, if you want a recurring membership, you can have it uh, every month, every week, every year. So what this means is that this person will be charged $5 every month for being a membership or a member on our websites. You can also offer a trial period as well. So you guys know how Netflix does like the seven day free trial thing. You guys can also offer that on your websites if you wanna go that route. And then you can also limit the payment cycles. 
So let's say, for example, they might forget to remember one day and then they look at their credit card and they're billed like 100 times, you know, over a certain amount of period. They might be pretty pissed off and they might, you know, call the bank and charge it back or something. So what you can do is limit that to like, you know, 14 payments or something like that. So you're going to say, look, we'll only pay, we'll only uh, charge you 14 times on your credit card, even though you're registered monthly because we want it to have an end date or you can have no end dates. All those apps on the iPhone stores, none of those have end dates. You have to go and manually try to cancel it. And then they make it really hard too. It's like, you have to call all these phone numbers. It's it's terrible. Like it's, it's a really long, hard process to get off those subscriptions. But um, for this specific case, I'm just going to have this as a one-time payment, all right? So uh, most of you probably wanna have it recurring, right? But uh, I'll just do it one, one time just to make this a lot more uh, convenient. Now you can have this as a lifetime or you can set this to expire as well. So that's really up to you. But uh, yeah, so we have a gold membership. They do have other options down here. So they have registration, permissions. Uh, however, we don't really need to use most of these and we might come back to a lot of these later, but uh, Buddy Boss has a lot of integrations that works with MemberPress. So we don't really need to use all of these other uh, options. So right here, we'll click on publish. All right, so let's click on memberships on the left side right here, and let's just take a look here at what we've done. So we have created two memberships. We have created a bronze membership, which is a free membership, and then we have a gold membership, which charges people $5, okay? So now that we have two memberships, we need to set the specific rules of these memberships. So let's go ahead and apply these rules. Now, before we go on any further, I'm gonna open up a second tab here. Okay, so first things first, let's click on rules. And let's add a new rule here. All right, so this is where a lot of people get confused and get lost with MemberPress and they blame everybody. And I totally understand um, memberships can be very uh, complicated, although they sound pretty easy at times. So first we have the new rule, right? And we have all content. Now you can change this rule to anything to help make you remember, you know, of what rule is what. So all content, but no groups or forums. Right, so that'll help us remember. So here we go, so we have protected content. Now, uh, I'm gonna give you my best way of doing this. There is a lot of ways on how to approach your membership websites. There's a lot of different ways on how to do this. Um, but for this specific tutorial, I'm just gonna try to make it as simple as possible. What we're gonna do is we're gonna select all pages, right? So basically I'm saying um, all, all the pages are protected content, right? Now, access conditions. So right here under membership, we're gonna select bronze, all right? All pages, but groups and forms. I don't know why that, you know, disappeared. Here we go. But no groups or forms. Now I'm gonna save this rule really quick. Just make sure that doesn't disappear again. That was weird. Okay, so let me go ahead and walk you through. So bronze membership will give everyone access to all the pages except what pages. So let me repeat that again. The bronze membership will give access to all of the pages except, and then we're gonna list the forum, and then we're also gonna list the groups. So in order to find the pages that we need to restrict, we're gonna go to our pages tab. So over here under pages, we'll go to all pages, and I recommend having a second tab open. So now you can see how access to all these pages are public, right? So by default, our website is available to the public. Yet we need to set rules to restrict this. So I wanna go ahead and I want to restrict the uh, forums and the groups. So in order to do that, we're gonna go to groups and click on edit. So any page that you want restricted for your uh, free membership, what you're gonna do is you're, you're gonna open that page. Now at the top right here, you're gonna see post equals 48. Now for all of your pages, you're gonna get a post number. So post equals 48. So what I wanna do is I want to say all content except 48. You guys can see I was messing around with this for quite some time. So now I'm basically saying the bronze membership can access all of the pages except the groups pages. Now let's find another page. What else do I wanna restrict? Well, I wanna restrict the forums page. Okay. And here we have post equals 51 at the top. So over here, I'll put in 51. Now for now, I'll just go ahead and click on save rule. 
All right, so now let's go ahead and take a look at our pages section. So over here, if you refresh the browser, it will then tell you that all these pages, now in order to access these pages, you must be a bronze member. So you can see the main members page is not accessible. The members, all these pages are not accessible now because of the bronze membership. Now there's also one more thing that we need to do. We need to actually make the activate page. We need to make the registration page and the a moderation page all public as well. So you see here the register page is set to a bronze membership. So member press is actually restricting every single page and that's a problem because now users cannot register on our website unless they are a membership and they can't get a membership because they have to register first. So for example, let me just go ahead and just give you an example of what why I'm saying this and what we have to do here. So I will open the register in a new tab here. Now, since we made the register page as part of a membership page only, they are no longer allowed to view this page. So since we made all of the pages um, as a membership, we need to release this page so all users can see this page. So let's do that. So under the register, I'll click on edit. And I'll now make this public. So I want everyone to have access to this. So under 42, we'll go back over here. And we're going to add 42 here as well. Okay. And we'll go back and then we're going to find the activate because they need to be able to activate the membership, right? Originally. And here we have 43. Okay. So 43. And the next thing we're going to have to do is that we're also going to have to change the login as well because the login, um, they can't log in, you know, if they're not a member. So we need to make sure that they can have access to login. And that is 151. And also the moderation page. I believe the moderation page is when people are trying to apply for something and it's in moderation. So let's go ahead and make this public as well. So this is number 50. So at this point, we're, we're gonna go ahead and save this rule now. So we're gonna go ahead and save it. And I'm gonna go back over here. So now that we've saved this rule, let's go ahead and re-examine what we've done right here. So I'll go ahead and refresh this page. All right, and now you'll see that we have these public, right? So now if a person tries to register, they will be allowed to register on our website. So I will open this in a new window. Basically what I've done here is I've added the ability for anyone to come to our website and register and make an account on our website. So that's why we had to make these public. So brand new users can still register on our websites. So I hope that made sense. You know, I, I kind of went through here and I made these pages public because we need users to register and uh, all these other ones are blocked. Now you can see here we have groups and forums. Now I bet you're still wondering, Daryl, why are these public? You know, I thought you wanted these to be restricted. So in our second tier membership, I'm gonna say only the gold members can have access to these pages. So I'm gonna change that in the very next membership. So let's do that. Let's go back over here. Our rules for our um, free membership is all set, all right? Let's go back over here and click on rules. Now what I'm gonna do really quickly is I'm gonna copy these because these pages we need to add to the gold membership by default, okay? So what I'll do over here is I'll create a second membership. So over here we have our, or I'm sorry, our second rules. So I'll click on rules. And this is the bronze membership. So all the pages, but no groups and forums, right? So if a user tries to uh, access the website that is not a member, they will not have access to the groups or the forums. I'm sorry, if they are a free member, they will not have access to the groups and forums. So now let's make a membership for pro users. So I'll click on add new, and this will just be all content. And then I'll just put over here gold, you know, just to help us remember gold. And I'll click on save rule. Oops, I have to put the content there first. So what I'll do here is just put all pages, right? All pages, membership, and then gold. So let's do that again, all pages and then gold. However, I'm still going to allow people to have access to the registration pages, right? Because if I don't put anything here, uh, the gold membership will then block all of the registration pages. So we need to make sure that uh, they'll still have access to those specific signup pages. So I'll go ahead and click on publish. All right, 
So at this point, our membership is pretty much done. The rules and the members are done. So now what I'll do is I'll walk you all through a test transaction of someone who's brand new to the website and wants to sign up on our community website. All right, so now that we've made these two memberships and these two rules, we now need to assign new people that sign up to our free membership so they will have access to our community websites. So let's go ahead and do that. Over here under settings, we'll click on settings. Hope you guys are still with me. I know MemberPress can be a little intimidating at first, but after you mess around with it for quite some time, you'll kind of get the hang of it. Now over here, you'll see BuddyPress and you'll need to enable the BuddyPress integration. That's why we installed that second add-on. So the default free membership is going to be the bronze membership because remember the bronze membership is free already. And if they sign up with the bronze, they will then have access to all of the pages except the forums and the groups pages. All right, here we go, <laughs> update options. All right, so now that I've done that, let me just kind of give you all a walkthrough example of someone visiting our community website and signing up for the very first time and see how the user experience works out for them. All right, so I'll open up a new browser, incognito, right? And we'll go to our membership website or our community website. And we need to make an account first. So I'll click on create an account. And now you'll see that we can access the register page because remember, we made it public for everybody. So I'll go ahead and make a quick account here. All right, so the user enters in their information and then they'll click on create an account. All right, so now the user will have to go ahead and confirm their email. Now I'm gonna go ahead and manually approve them so they can go ahead and log in and have access to the community website. All right, so the new user is now going to log in right here. All right, so let me explain everything that we've done so far. So the member has now signed up to our website and since they registered, they have automatically become a bronze member by default because everyone that joins this community website will be a bronze member and they can see their membership by going over here to membership and going to info. They can also go ahead and manage their subscriptions and also their payments as well on your community websites. So you'll see that this person is a bronze membership. Cool, and it's currently active. So let's go ahead and go back to our website. Now the rule for the bronze membership was they will not have access to the groups or the forums. So you guys can see that we can have access to the newsfeed, we can have access to the shop page. However, let's click on the groups page. So over here, I'll click on groups. And you'll see that this person is not allowed to view this page because they are on a free membership and only the gold membership will allow users to access the groups section. Now, let's say, for example, you want your users to be able to upgrade to the gold plan, right? There's a few ways on how to approach this. So here's our memberships and right here we have our gold memberships and I'll click on view. Now there's a few ways on how you can have your members uh, upgrade. You can even make a new page and once you make a new page, you can put the uh, gold membership on there and then you can add it to the menu. However, you can also add a custom link and I think that's a easier way and it's a lot cleaner. So what I'll do over here is I'll go over here to dashboard and the cool thing with custom link is that you don't have to reset the permissions for the membership. Because if you make a new page again, remember that new page will be blocked for new members. So you need to make sure that if you make any page for upgrades that they must be available to the public so that they can upgrade. All right, so over here we have the appearance and we have menus. I feel like this is the easier way to do it. I saw their tutorials and they recommended making a whole new page. And I says, you know, I'll just add a custom link. I think it's a lot cleaner. And here we have custom links. So I'll click on custom link and I'll add this to the menu. Or here I'll put a uh, upgrade, upgrade. And then I'll put that URL of the gold membership and click on add to menu. All right, and then I'll save the menu. So now let's go back to our other website and see what the experience looks like for Rachel. All right, so here's Rachel. And now on the left side, you'll see that we have this upgrade tab. So if I click on this upgrade tab, Rachel or Paddywhack or whoever, they can now upgrade to the gold membership just by clicking on that specific icon on the menu. So I feel like that's a really quick way, you know, upgrade, you know, it just takes them right there and they can sign up and then they can uh, sign up and pay and then that would be the end of it. So that's an example of how you can have a pro and a free membership. 
Now let's talk about how you can only just have a pro website, which a lot of users might want for their community website. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about a paid membership only. So there is a few ways to do this and I'll walk you through uh, two ways, all right? So let's go to our dashboard and we'll go to member press. This time we're gonna click on groups. So up here, we'll click on add new and we're gonna create a new group. Now, the term groups is actually a very, I don't know, they shouldn't have used this term, but essentially what we're doing is we're making a page to put our memberships on. So over here, I'll just do the main, the main memberships. And I'll scroll down. So here we have the membership. So I'm gonna offer the gold membership and I'm also going to offer the bronze membership. Now right here we have pricing page theme, so we can change the color and the style of this specific page. However, I believe that non-custom is the best because it actually integrates really well with Buddy Boss and looks identical to what we already have. But you can go through and look at all these color schemes. So for example, I'll just do classic dark for now and I'll scroll up here and I'll click on publish. And now what I'll do is I will open up this link in a new browser. All right, so we have the gold membership, right? And we have the bronze membership. So this is currently the scheme that we're using. Now here we have comments. We can always disable these comments. In fact, maybe you should. Now the one thing that we need to change besides the comments is we have bronze membership. So what you can do now is you can just change the bronze membership to a paid membership and then no one will be able to access the website unless they are a paid member only. So let's do that. So we're back here at groups and now we'll go back to our memberships. And for the bronze membership, we can just click on edits and then we can change the price. So for example, I'll just put a dollar and then I'll click on update. Now at this point, the users cannot access the actual websites because they must be a paid member only. So they're gonna have to register one way or the other or they're gonna have to pay us one way or the other. So that's why we have the, um, the groups page. So now that we have this groups page, we need to actually assign this groups page to our register button. So what that means is when people actually click on register, I want them to go to this page first. I don't want them to go to a sign up form, right? So we'll go ahead and insert this URL. Now we're gonna go to Buddy Boss and then we're gonna go to settings. Now right here we have registration form. So since we're not offering free memberships, we're gonna put here a custom URL and then we're going to go ahead and paste that URL right there. And then again, we'll click on save settings. All right, so to understand what we have done, let's go ahead and take a look at our registration page from a user who is brand new to the website. So under registration, I will open this in a new browser. All right, so the user has now visited our website and when they click on create an account, now, since they clicked on create an account, it's gonna redirect them to our memberships page where they must pay in order to have access to our membership. And again, if they try to access any of these other pages right here, uh, it will not let them. So it's gonna say, nope, you have to be a member first. So yeah, we can go ahead and disable the comments as well. Uh, yeah, you guys should have disabled this or I should have disabled this. So, so we can actually disable these comments right here and this can be a little annoying. So let's do that. Let's go back over here to our page and our main memberships page. You wanna make sure that we do not allow comments. So take those off and then click on update. So at this point, your users will be forced to purchase a membership. Now, instead of having two membership tiers, remember, you can always just delete one. Like you, for example, you can just delete the bronze and then the gold membership would be the only one available and that gives access to the entire websites. So if you wanna do that, you know, you can go ahead and do that. And also under the uh, group section, you can change the appearance of that table. So remember, uh, this is public, right? It has to be public because then they wouldn't be able to purchase their membership. Under the edit tab, you guys can always change the color scheme of this uh, anytime you choose to do that. So now let's say, okay, well, I wanna make a custom page, right? Because I don't wanna use the default member press. So let's go ahead here and take this a step further and let's go ahead and make a custom registration form. So remember, in order to make a custom registration form, you will need the Elementor plugin. So again, you can get there by going to plugins, add new, 
and typing in Elementor because Elementor actually has a lot of templates with Buddy Boss, and we can use those templates to create a custom form. So just make sure that you have this plugin activated. And once you do that, let's go ahead and make a new page. So over here, we'll go to plus new and go to page. All right, and then this will be the new register form. New register, register form. Sorry, I'm actually talking on my mic and it's hard for me to see the keyboard. <laughs> That's why I keep typing like I'm illiterate. So here, I'll go ahead and click on publish. And now we're going to edit this form with Elementor. All right, now at this point, we can make our own register form. So we don't need to use the default one that comes with uh, member press. So here I'll click on the Buddy Boss. And what's really cool about Buddy Boss is they give us all these templates that we can use throughout our website. Now in this next section after this, I'll be showing you how you can add your membership website as a subdomain. And then you can basically build your website around it, which is really, really cool. So uh, right here we have a comparison table. And you know, guys, I'm just gonna be really lazy here. I'll just use one of these just as a quick example. All right, cool, so our table has been loaded. Now I'm offering two memberships, but you can offer as many memberships as you want. You can offer only one membership. So if I'm only offering one, I can just delete these two and just leave one. Now I have a full tutorial on the Elementor page builder and I'll leave that in the description below of this video. But uh, I don't wanna cover Elementor in this video because there's a lot to cover and we're just gonna use it only for this one page. So uh, what I'll do here is I'll just change this to my bronze, right? My bronze membership. And then this will be my gold membership. Now remember, um, these are both paid. And if again, if you want, you can just delete both of these and only have one membership on your website, which would just be like the, the gold membership only. So there's a lot of different ways on how to approach this. I'm just doing this as an example. I'll go ahead and just delete this just to reduce the confusion here. So let's just pretend I only have two plans, right? I have the bronze plan and the gold plan, all right? I have this table here, but we're just gonna leave that for now uh, just to speed this up. So over here, we have our memberships. Now I'm gonna take the bronze membership here and I'm gonna copy this. And for the get started, I'll paste the bronze membership here, right? And for the gold membership, what I'll do is I will copy this and I will click on this button and I will paste it there. And I will click on updates. Now, one thing also is I wanna get rid of this new registration form. So in order to get rid of that, on the bottom left, we have settings. I wanna hide the title and that's it. Now, again, we can add stuff to this page, like we can add a heading text and we can say like, oh, welcome to our website but I'm just gonna leave all this blank right now just to speed up this video. So I'll go ahead and close that. I just wanna demonstrate how to create a custom page from scratch if you wanna do that. All you need to do is just copy and paste the URLs and make a brand new page and then assign this page as your basic page for registration. So I'll click on view page, right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and copy this page. I'll copy this page and we'll go to our settings and for our registration form, we're gonna assign this page now instead of the default one. So I'm just giving you different ways on how to actually approach this. Buddy Boss, settings, right? And under the custom URL, instead of using the member press, I wanna create my own custom form and that's gonna be the new register form. So now I'll click on save settings. Now there is one more thing we have to do here. So since we created the new page again, remember this page will be restricted automatically by member press. So remember any page that you create, you must unrestrict it from your membership rules. So over here we have member press and we have rules, right? Now I'm gonna go ahead and find this page ID. So over here, pages, all pages, right? And the new page that we created was the it, I believe it was called the new register form. So here I'll click on edit. So this is post 210. Now remember, you must update your rules again. So uh, we need to be able to access this page because by default, member press is restricting every single page. So here I want 210 to be uh, enabled, right? I'll go to our other rule and we'll edit this as well. And now I will allow this page as well and click on save rule. Hopefully that's not confusing. Remember, every page that you create will be automatically restricted by member press, so you must unrestrict it, all right? So uh, hopefully that made sense. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our registration page. All right, so we have our user coming here for the very first time on a new browser, and when we click on create an account, 
it will then take them to our page that we created, right? So now they can purchase the bronze or the gold, right? And if they click on get started, it'll take them to the bronze membership where they can purchase the bronze membership. So that's pretty much it. And then here, if they wanna purchase this, they'll click on get started, and this will take them to the gold membership. So that's just one way on how you can restrict uh, everyone from your websites. And in this case, I use two memberships. However, if you only want one, you can just delete this and then just have only one, and it'd just be one button to go, and that's it. So that's pretty much it for the rules, the memberships. I Hopefully that made sense. Now, the last thing that you have to do, obviously, is you have to allow payment gateways on your website. So let's go over here to member press and we'll go to settings. So just remember that uh, the memberships are all in place, everything's done, but you need to accept payments. So click on payments. And here I have Stripe already connected. So I'll go ahead and disconnect this. All right, so I took out my payment methods. Now here you'll click on plus. Now you have a few options. You guys can use PayPal or you guys can use Stripe or you guys can just use offline payment or even authorized.net. So I like using Stripe, but uh, it's really up to you. You can also add multiple ones. And remember, if you're gonna have PayPal standard, all you need to do is enter in your PayPal email and you're all set. So all you need to do here is just click on connect to Stripe and then it'll sync up with uh, Stripe. So you don't need to enter in any credentials, you don't need to enter in any hooks or nothing like that. You'll just go through the process of clicking on this connecting with Stripe, and then it'll run you through the process of setting up your uh, website with Stripe. So here you can see that MemberPress can recognize our accounts. So I have, I have two accounts, so I'll just click on connect. And that's it. So Stripe has now successfully been connected. Now remember, uh, MemberPress will actually add the automatic hook for recurring payments. So there's nothing more for you to do. So Stripe and MemberPress will work together in order to collect those recurring payments if users are recurring members on your community website. So whew, I hopefully that was a lot to take in, guys. Uh, hopefully I've covered everything about member members and MemberPress. I know it can be a little confusing at first, but just be very, uh, give it time. You know, MemberPress does take time to learn. It's not easy for beginners. It can be very overwhelming and confusing. And personally, my two cents about MemberPress, I personally don't like MemberPress. And the only reason why I made you guys purchase MemberPress is because it integrates super, super well with uh, Buddy Boss. In fact, I tried to use Paid Memberships Pro uh, over here under plugins. I tried to use Paid Memberships Pro first, but it just didn't work. You know, I had a lot of, um, I had a lot of server problems and I just didn't use it because it was just causing a lot of conflict. And there's also Ultimate Membership Pro. However, there's no integrations for Buddy Boss. So uh, hands down, um, this plugin is the most suitable with Buddy Boss. So now that we covered memberships, now let's talk about how to add your website as a subdomain so you can have a beautiful website and then offer your community in a subdomain. So let's talk about that in the next section. So we're getting near the end of the tutorial and I wanna say congratulations for making it this far. A lot of people don't. Now in this next section, I'll be showing you how to put your community website on a subdomain. So maybe you don't want people to go to like the activity page on the very front page. You kinda of wanna have your website and have your community inside of your current website, if that makes any sense. So in this next section, I'll be just giving you different ways on how to uh, put your community website inside of your website using a subdomain. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. All right, party people, welcome to the last section of this video. And if you guys have made it this far, congrats. This is a lot to soak in and a lot to cover. But then again, it's all rewarding because then you guys can have your own community websites. Now in this section of the video, I'll be showing you different ways on how to actually apply your community websites as a normal website. So for example, we have this website right here called Drone Academy. Now they are using Buddy Boss and every website uses it differently. So I just wanna kind of pick your brain a little bit and just show you different ways on how to approach your community website. So they have used the page builder as normal, right? They have used the header for Buddy Boss and they just said, you know what? I don't want a membership. I don't wanna do any of that. I just wanna use the page builder to build out our websites. And on the courses page, they are using Lifter, I'm sorry, LearnDash. So you can see they have made all their courses public uh, on the shop page. They have 
uh, put the shop page right here so it's very easily accessible. And over here they have the community section as well. And this is where they have put everything. So they've just put things a little bit differently and you can see a lot of people are using this service and people are engaging and so on and so forth. So that's one way on how you can do that. And if you do want to go this route, all you need to do is just go ahead and change your front page to your home page and then just add the community to the top, you know, and that's pretty much it. So you can see their community is totally public. So you would need to go to the options and make sure that your uh, membership section is public. All right. And as you can tell, only members can engage in this uh, activity. So we don't have the option to not until we sign up. Now, the other website, eight minute yoga, they've done the similar thing, except they don't have courses. They don't have anything up there. However, you can sign in and then you can go ahead and log in to their website, which gives you access to their community. So they're doing something a little similar, except theirs is private. So you can only access the community if you are a registered member. And again, they're using a page builder here. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, Founder Magazine, they've done something a little differently. So they've created a subdomain. So for example, if you go to their website, um, you're just gonna see like a normal website, right? It doesn't, you can't even see Buddy Boss anywhere right here. It doesn't show anything that uh, looks anything like a membership website or a community website. However, they do have this courses tab and they do also have elements right here, like my account and everything. So we know there is a process to register. And this is where you would join, you know, join the courses. Uh, you would make an account and register. So here we can enroll now. So once you make a payment to the website, you'll then have access to their community. So there are a few different ways on how to approach this. Now, the first way I'm gonna show you how to approach this is by just creating a normal page and then assigning that page. And then you can link your community within your website. So let me just give you an example. So this is the first way. I'll go ahead and click on plus new and page. So here we go. Now with Buddy Boss, we have tons of elements. So we have all these templates that we can use and we can design our websites however we want. So here I have header, or I'm sorry, is it hero? There is hero. And I'll just insert this. All right, so here we have our hero image. And next what we can do is we can start adding more things about it, like, you know, um, you know features, or you can start designing the page any which way you want. So I'll just insert this one. And I went ahead and I just added a few more sections just to show you, you know, just to speed up this part. So you can see here how I made a website, right, on the front page. Now, I don't really need this Buddy Boss at the top because we already have this element. So I can actually disable everything else on the top right here. So on the bottom left, under this gear icon, I'm gonna hide this title. I don't want the homepage title to show up and I wanna select Elementor Canvas. So the elements or canvas option will disable everything from the theme and only have the page builder showing. And since Buddy Boss has elements right here, so now you guys will see that the Buddy Boss theme is gone and now only the page builder is acting. So that's just one way on how to approach it. You can use the page builder to do everything. Or what I can do is I can delete this. And then under the settings again, I'll just put Elementor full width. And what that's gonna do is that that will re-enable Buddy Boss on the page. So then you'll see that we have our header come back. And there we go, it'll look just like that. So that's just another option. You know, I'm just trying to give you uh, various ways on how to approach your community website. So instead of actually having our community newsfeed on the front page, we can assign the this page as our home page. So I'll go ahead and close the builder and I'll click on customize. And for our homepage settings, I will now select the other page here. So I'll go ahead and select the homepage and now I'll click on publish. So now you guys can see that this is my current homepage. And if users want to visit the newsfeed, they can go ahead and click on newsfeed or access groups. And if they click on the logo, it'll then take them back to the homepage. So that's one way to approach it. Now there is one other way and that's a very popular way and that's adding your community as a subdomain to your website. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through that. Basically, I'm gonna show you how you can have a website, kind of like Founder Magazine, where um, all of the content is listed on the websites, yet your community is inside of the website in a subdomain. So I'll go ahead and walk you through how to create a subdomain for your community website. And that's pretty much it for this tutorial. All right, so the first thing you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to go into your server settings. Now, it's really easy to make a subdomain, and for this part of the video, I'll be using Hostinger and also uh, Name Hero. 
I do have other channels where I talk about Hostinger quite a lot, so I'll show you how to get it set up with Hostinger as well. So you're gonna go ahead and log into your C panel. Now, once you're in your C panel, all you need to do for Name Hero is just type in subdomains and you'll see the subdomain section. Now, what you can do again is put your community inside of your website instead of having this domain. So for example, instead of DW tutorial, we can put community and then it'll be dot DW tutorial. So right here, I'll click on creates. All right, so our subdomain has been created. I'll go ahead and click on go back. And then we're going to click on these dots right here to go back to our options. So now I'll scroll down. So now that we have our subdomain up, all we need to do now is install WordPress onto our subdomain. So right here, we have WordPress Manager by Softaculous. We'll click there. And then we'll click on install. Next, you're gonna see this choose domain. And now you're gonna click on the community DW tutorial. So essentially, we're making a website that's attached to our current websites. And then right here, you guys can put in some info, but I'm just going to just enter in some uh, info right here. And I'll keep scrolling down. And once you're done filling out all this info, all you need to do is click on install. All right, and now it's installing WordPress onto our subdomain. All right, cool. So you'll go ahead and click on the link. And awesome, so now we have our subdomain up. So now that we have this website, that's kind of like a mini version of our current website, you can now go ahead and build your community website inside of this domain. And then you can have your websites on this domain. So you can disable everything from here and then you can go ahead and put everything uh, on your community. So next, I bet you're wondering, well, Daryl, I did all the work on this website. You know, I have to remake everything from scratch all over again on this website. Now, that's partially true. Now, you can install a free plugin and you can migrate your whole website, basically copy and paste it onto your new domain so you don't have to do all the hard work all over again. So let's go over here to plugins and we'll go to add new. And right here, you'll type in all in one. And this is the plugin that you need. It's called All-in-One WP Migration. So you'll go ahead and just install this plugin. Now, once you do that on the bottom right here, you'll see export. So now you can just export your entire community websites and then upload it onto another website. So export to file. So now it's going to upload your entire website on one single file. Now, while that's exporting your website, you'll go to your community websites, the, um, the other one that you made with the subdomain, and you'll also install the same plugin because you're going to need to import that file. So right here, I'll click on uh, activate. All right, so going back to our main website, we can see that we can now download this file. So right here, download, and then I'll click on save file. Now there is one other option that you have to do for your server. Now I'll touch base on Hostinger in just a bit. However, for those of you with name hero, you'll click on login to cPanel and you need to increase the max file size. So right here, you'll type in PHP, select a PHP version. Don't worry, I know everyone panics when they go into these options, but we're just going to uh, increase the amount that we're allowed to upload to our WordPress website. So right here, we'll click on options. We'll scroll down, just keep scrolling. And you wanna change the max file size to as much as possible. So I think it's like two gigs. And there you go. So now we can upload uh, a lot more onto our community websites. So now going back to our subdomain websites, I now want to import that file. So right here, imports, file. Now you'll go ahead and select the file that you downloaded. And this process might take anywhere from two minutes to around 10 minutes. Now, if you are using Hostinger, which is another hosting company that I do recommend on a lot of my other various YouTube channels, I'll show you all how you can quickly create a subdomain. So over here under hosting, you'll go ahead and go to your domain and then click on manage. Next, we'll go ahead and scroll down, just keep scrolling. And then we'll go to subdomains. Here, you can create a subdomain at your current website. So this can be something like community.yourwebsite, and I will create a custom folder and click on create. Oh, sorry, I'll just do, I don't know, DW hosting. You would put your, um, your website there or something that you would know that it's your websites. 
and I'll click on create. Next, we will install WordPress onto that domain. So over here under WordPress, we have dashboard. And now we're going to scroll down and we're going to install WordPress onto our new domain. So right here, click on install. And then for WordPress, we'll click on select. And now we're going to select the community as our new uh, website. So we're going to install our website at this domain. Here, I'll go ahead and put in a password. And then right here, you'll also need to put a database password. So you'll have access to your database. Then I'll go to the bottom and I'll click on install. All right, perfect. So we have now installed WordPress onto our new domain. And here you can see our new website. So we can just go ahead and click on it. And this is now our community domain. So now we can go ahead and log into our website. Then you'll go ahead and put in the new credentials that you created and click on login. And perfect, now you guys can create your own community inside of your other website. So that's how you would create a subdomain for Hostinger. Now also you might notice that we need to add a SSL onto your website because by default there is no SSL. So what you can do right here is go ahead and select community. You'll go ahead and scroll down and then you will go ahead and go right here and set up the SSL certificate. So under your community website or your subdomain, you'll just click on install SSL. And that's it, you're all done. Now you need to force the SSL to work. So the SSL is working, but you wanna select this option right here and that will force the HTTPS to work. And if you go back to your websites and you refresh, you will now see that the padlock is there. And then you can go ahead and log in and you can make any changes you want to your community website. All right, so let me go ahead and demonstrate to you all the domain slash subdomain um, style website. So let's say for example, someone visits your website, right? So they can see all of your services. They can see whatever you're talking about on your website, like your staff, your contact us page, and then your homepage. However, let's imagine that you had a community in your website. And right here, if I click on get estimates, this will then take your users to your community where they can go ahead and register and log in and it's a completely different domain. So it would be a whole different experience. So you can kind of create this as a shell and then you can use the subdomain as a, a website inside of your current community. So I hope that makes sense. Now that's pretty much it for my tutorial guys. Uh, if you guys have any questions for me, feel free to let me know in the description below of this video. Uh, I really did my best to make this a very comprehensive and uh, good tutorial for all of you. So make sure to give me a big thumbs up. And with that said, I will see all of you party people in the next video, guys. Take care.